Hey, good night, Karen. How are you doing? Hope you're well. Smooth. Cheers. Taking a small glass of wine tonight, very small. <laughs> How you doing? Good? Not a heavy dose tonight. And what I'm gonna have also as well is some uh, is some nice coconut water. Unfortunately, um, can't get it from the tree a direct tree <laughs> we'll get some nice cool nice coconut water Hey, how you doing, Max? Hope you're well. Get this light going there. And see. How are you guys doing this afternoon, this evening? September 11. Another day, but a very crucial day at the same time day which is etched into history where many will never forget what happened on that day nevertheless still we it's a day for um, consideration of where we're coming from where we're going yes the music playing is uh, all the way from South Africa by Tato Cash, a main man, called Sweet Corn, special music from Magiza. He's doing great stuff uh, there in South Africa and his music is actually touching many different lives. Um, one, one of the things with Tato, Tato is always, um, you know, let me see. His name is spelled um, Theta Cash. Let me see if I can get it here. It really sets the stage. Ah, oh, here's O'Neill. Theta Cash, that's the music there. <clears throat> and it's really cool, very relaxing, very chill. Hey, buddy, how you doing, man? Oh, sugar, I just realized it on my ear. I should get a, I should get a big, um, a big thing like here, there, one of those big earpiece thing there. Yeah, yeah. One of those cheap ones, the cheap ones you get from the shop on the corner. <laughs> it was. Should I put this in before? Uh, here we are. Is that better? Can you hear me? Yeah, I'm here. You can hear me, Yeah, I'm here. No, no, something's not working. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So? Oh, yes. I don't know why, why, let me see, let me check something. You can hear me clearly, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear really a good trashy sound. And let me just ask if anybody's here. Uh, Karen, uh, Jacqueline, uh, can you hear if O'Neill sounds very clear? I hear a good trashy sound, O'Neill. I'm not hearing that. I 
I don't know. There's a there's a trashy sound. Let me see. Okay, hold on. Can you hear a trashy sound, guys? Jacqueline, can you hear a trashy? I can You can hear us both. Not He's not our case. Karen, they say you are not clear on either. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Let me, Let me just check. Let me switch. You need to go back to where you came from last week. Yeah. Where were you again last week? <laughs> in some other in some parts of the world. In the great state of Italy. Italy, yeah. Okay. O'Neill is not that clear. Mm. Okay. His volume is a bit low. Okay. Actually, you sound very good there. I don't know. Okay. Are you hearing me now? Ah, that's good. Is that is that the same cheap one like me? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just, yeah, as they said, yeah. When in doubt, exactly. just go back to what you saw that well, now. Yeah, when in doubt, it just you know, it's like when I go if I go to a restaurant or so and I'm not sure what to eat, I always play safe, go for something chicken. Go for exactly. a chicken. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Go for something that you're you're used and to. Yeah, and especially when you don't have the time to play around, you just want to get straight to the point, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Definitely. So, how are you doing anyhow still? I am good, man. I I just traverse one continent to another, but I'm actually yes. feeling feeling good. Because I do have a a tip that I use anytime I sort of go from one place to the other. Um I will get back and then run or work out at the gym. And typically, mm. it, it it works wonders. So, okay. So okay, that's it. Good, but good. yeah, come back. I was in New York this morning. Uh, I was actually in New York City. So I woke up um, in New York City and probably around, let me see, what time was it? About 7 a.m. before, you know, all this stuff and the um, memorials. I just took a walk, yes. so it was good, good, good okay. somber moments in New York. But we'll talk more yeah, about that. Yeah, we'll talk more about it and stuff like that. Um, just want to check, uh, well, ladies and gentlemen. I want to thank you so much for joining us tonight on Talking Sip. And uh, I just wait for Vita to let me know when she wants to come in. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, tonight what we want to talk about is where were you on September 11, 2001, uh, what it means to you, what was it like. And uh, yeah, I think I think that's a sort of essence. But of course, we're gonna we're gonna um, take the plane still and go to Jamaica and just maybe find out what's happening over there. A couple of persons have passed on. I didn't even saw what's happening where you are. So if you want to join in, as someone was saying last week that um, they didn't know when to join in, I said all you got to do is just give us a cue when to join in. If there's four persons on, we just rotate ourselves. Unfortunately, I can't rotate because and the host and it's linked to myself until we move on to maybe youtube where i can get up to 10 persons um that is something which is in the making and that facility is there but we we like the very down-to-earth relaxed chill moment on youtube on face on instagram is it on it yeah it's instagram well it's a it's facebook company so you can see <laughs> the difference, Same difference. difference right <laughs> <laughs> yes. So what are you drinking, right? Uh, I'm drinking the the Dear Devil Buena Vista. Buena Vista. Yeah. Is that a culture club? Buena Vista club. There's a club there. A yeah, Buena club. Vista. That's the you're talking about the Cuban Buena Vista. Yes. It's a yes. good group. Good, um, good, a uh, good group out of Cuba. I haven't heard anything about them a lot. Yeah, time. I I used to I, I used to love them when I used to work with yeah. this restaurant called Pizza Express uh, when I was studying in the UK here while in the UK. We used to play just jazz. Only jazz was played there. Buena Vista mm -hmm. was really good, you know. But what I'm drinking yeah. is um, some red wine. I have a smaller glass today. Smaller glass. See. Because people have been talking about what happened last week. So people think it's some rummet thing going on. So I have a <laughs> smaller glass. And, but I have a big glass. This big glass is of coconut water. This is there coconut you go. water. <laughs> in, in, in a Stella Artois glass. Yeah, you know, still at <laughs> all. You know, and, yeah. and, uh, so, 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 so that's fantastic. I just, uh, Shelly, how are you? Dara Shelly, if you, uh, 
Sarah Shelley. I keep saying Sarah. Sarah. Hey, wow. Hey, Vita, how you doing? Everything good? Doing great, doing great. Fantastic. You're looking very chilled. I'm chilled this evening. It's a chilling evening. I I went um, walking and I came up to a liquor store and I found a new Appleton from Jamaica that I've never seen before. A new Appleton. So, from so, so it's not before. new, uh, Vita. It's, it's a rebranding. Oh, so, it's so yeah. So if, oh, if you just you just you just mash up the thing. You should have. Just, <laughs> no, that's, okay. that's okay. No, I'm hoping to learn it. You know, that, that, <laughs> no, that. I, I I thought the same thing. Um, I was like, oh, there's a new Appleton, and they're right. like, no, it's a rebranding. Uh-huh. At first, someone told me that they changed the name from Appleton to something else. I'm like, no, that can't be true, because you can't change an iconic brand. And then they're like, no, they just changed the labeling on it. Yeah, they'd be rebranding. So yeah. I'm trying a it- new. Is is it like a very a very lovely darker Greek brown or something like that on it? Is it, it sharp? Is. It's actually smooth. Yeah, I think I've seen it before. Yeah. That I know. So there's a slight difference to it. So, so, mm. so you know, of a, a tip, and I think we have talked about it on the show before. The only woman master blender in the world is Appleton. So the master blender is a woman. The only one in the world. Oh. So do you call her master? Yeah. And do you it's call her master. Master, you ma- She's a master call- blender. So what do you call her master? Yeah, you, yeah, I'm just. You call Peter, our master. What do you call, her, what do you call a master, Peter? I master myself. So, so you don't have a headmaster for who's a woman. It's a headmistress. <laughs> so why do you call her master? Well, in, in the in the time and place where we are now, with no gender agenda fuel fluidity or whatever you want to put it, I guess you you have to be careful that you don't offend someone, Seymour. Okay, so I I I, you know, I, I identify as. Well, whatever. Yeah, I identify yeah. as a female, but you have to be careful in when you're talking. So whether it's it's a personal they're using, that's that's well, what you're fighting for here. Or and and the birth certificate, you're gonna be no gender. Right. So 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 therefore I identify and I'm coming out tonight for the first time com- publicly. Oh, wait, 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 you're coming out later, not now. You're coming out? I'm I'm, I'm coming out as male, straight and shooting okay. forward. <laughs> Um, it was I'm, good. I'm very impressed. It was. It was. It was good. Um, I'm trying to. You see me looking down. I'm trying to remember Joy's last name. Uh, Joy Spence is her name. Who's she? Uh, oh, she's the ma- She's the master blender. The only woman master blender in the world. I'm gonna look. I'm gonna look it up. See if anybody ever called her Mistress Spence. Mistress Joy Spence. Spence. Some um, current name. Mist- just put it. Joy Spence. Thank you, yeah. Karen. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Joy so- Spence is her. It's really, really sharp person. Um, and I have the family happen to know her pretty well. Yeah. So really, really sharp. Well, listen, let me just shout out. Let me just shout out to um, billionaires. There's a billionaire on. We're going to try to get a billionaire in so we can get out some money. We've got also a crypto, crypto king here. Um, Mr. Uh, you know, the, 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 the Kiza, the Giza, Kiza from Jamaica, Alex, you know. Um, De, De, Deanne is here. Please like and share. She's there. Happy birthday to her tomorrow when that comes uh, as well. Happy birthday. Mags. You know, good night, King Alex. Oh yeah, so, so we got a king. We got we got a king. We got goddesses. We got everybody here tonight. I, 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 O'Neill, I don't know what, what's your position, man. I'm just so <laughs> very, you know? I, I I'm just the the great one. <laughs> you're the great one. <laughs> you're, the, you're, the, you're the great one. You know. What I'm yep, saying? that's it. I'm the um, great one. Well, ladies and gentlemen, um, as I, as I said tonight, we we're gonna be talking about September 11. But we'll also be very flexible to bring persons in. Um, what you need to do is to just say that you want to come in. Um, then we'll, we'll identify us yourself and just come in. Um, well, f- first of all, um, September 11th has been a, a, a day which it's etched. One would say it is etched in history, in calendars, diary, as a very pivotal moment. Um, in our lives, you know, one can remember, it's like when John F. K. died, people who were around that time know. My father, I believe, my late father, had a newspaper, a New York, hey, hey. A, a paper. You my know? billionaire friend. Oh, my days. Okay, we have to stop and just give credence to the billionaire just for a moment. Um, I don't know. 
he never shows his face. He always shows some bottle or something like that. Uh, I know. What, it, what, it said, what it said? Let me read the bottle. Hold on. It's a cockroach. Cock, cock it says, it's a, it's says beg, it's, it's beg your money. It's, it's <laughs> <actually> <laughs> 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 Sir Bern. Yes, boss. O'Neill, Vita. Yes, sir. What does it say? I'm not saying it again. <laughs> it's a cockroach. I Talk said it says, that. beg your money. You see, what happened is, it's, it's, it's a, it maybe it's a, you have to translate that from, from the, the, the Dutch language into English. Okay. <laughs> I, I think it's a Spanish, it's a Spanish. What, 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 I think it's Croatian. What is it, Lester? I think it's from Croatia. It's from Croatia. Okay. okay. Yeah. Well, I, I, <laughs> I, I can't read sometimes because I don't have my glasses. So. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and things like that. You can, the, you, you can spell it. You don't have to read. You can break it up in syllables. It's two, it's two words. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's all you're having tonight? I'm having wine. Who's having all okay. that? We all having all that tonight. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, anyway, it, well... We've got to be on our best behavior because I've been reprimanded in many ways of the videos which has been going yes. on. Lester mm -hmm. has been doing things, and uh, so good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm drinking some wine evening. and some coconut evening. water. Evening. Yes, Anil, cheers, cheers. Okay, guys, Lester, what's going on otherwise? What's, what's going on in your world? <clears throat> well, everybody's, everybody's only talking about COVID, isn't it? COVID. It's COVID. I have no idea what that is. There's no other news, you know. You know what? Well, that's the news, but that's yeah. what most people focus on. Um, you know, as Silver mentioned, talk about 9 11, um, very mm. important to most of us. I was in New York and that day. So it's very important to most of us. There are other things to talk about. Um, today, we have at least 100 or more children that was brought in from Afghanistan that we are mm. vaccinating for, to join school here. So there's a lot of other situations. We're just not talking about it because we are yes. so wrapped up in COVID. Yeah. And, and, and I think it is right that we, we talk about um, September 11 as well. And that's why, because in my show, which I do on Thursday nights, which we found out that for the past 10 months, 12 months, every topic that started it was COVID and then one day it dawned on us that we are losing people because people are just fed up with just talking about COVID um, yeah. not that they are dismissing the fact that COVID exists but they are recognizing that there are other things in the world which are happening that somehow is being overlooked, sidestepped and yes. therefore there need to be some sort of traction or some interest or some sort of discussion on other things True. and True. I, I, I was thinking the other day, I was in the park one day after when my son was at the tracks and it was in the UK. The sun was at, the sun had this nice, I think I was telling honey, it had this nice sort of orange look, you know, like my shirt. And it doesn't mean anything less than I just wear the orange shirt today, just by chance, you know. And you, you have democratic political freedom. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. What can I say? I, I'm grateful for such um, uh, confirmation. And what, what I found out was that People were all about the place. Today was packed on the street. People were just on the road. It felt so normal. And, um, and it, it hit me. It hit me very powerfully that, hang on a second. Things are normal, but sometimes it is where you put your focus on. You're not dismissing some realities. You know? You're not dismissing that cancer is not around. You're not dismissing that AIDS is around. You're not dismissing that COVID is around. But then you realize that, hang on a second, we have got to move on. Yeah, and and it just hit me so powerfully. Yes, so I, I would say you know for me, I have sort of mentally moved on from the minute I got vaccinated. Yes, right, and I have said to myself is, if I'm vaccinated, I'm not worrying about anybody else. If they want to go, you know, you always say, hey, advise, go get it. But I, I'm fine, and and mm. I think Silberni and I chatted about this. It was such a breath of fresh air being in Italy and yes. nobody's talking about COVID in the way we are talking yes. about COVID in the U.S. Mm. And visiting friends and the warm welcome, the kiss on the cheek, right? 
visiting, you know, some older folks who you think would have been very, you know, sort of taken aback based on what happened over the last 18 months. No M yeah. race. Mm. And even the media, the media is not focused on that. You see the restaurants, you see the streets, and you, you wonder, you know, hey, is this, is there something here going on from a, a media sort of focus on it to drive revenue? Yeah. And, and then something struck me last night when I flew into New York. Um, and I went out, tried to find uh, a couple of different places, say, you know what, I'm just going to get a drink, just got into New York. I could not find a bar that was empty. Mm. But guess what? nobody was wearing their mask. Everybody was just in their own having fun. And I yes. wonder if we sort of take out New York, California, um, D.C., and just focus on the middle America. I wonder if folks are just going about their business. Mm. And I do believe at some point in time, our policymaker has to figure out to say, look, this is something that is here. We have yes. to manage it but we can't cause the level of anxiety for our people, right? That people are so afraid to embrace. And that's why, yeah, I said, when I was in Italy, I was so happy. People didn't, they just grab you and just hug you. And I'm like, welcome back. And, and I wish we, we get to that point where we move on and we sort of said, you know what, we're managing it. We have the healthcare system to take care of it. And let's go figure out how to vaccinate the rest of the world because the Western countries are good. And I mm -hmm. wish we would focus on that. Yeah. Rita? I, I agree with you, um, Toto, O'Neill. And it's funny you said it. And I smile when you mentioned because the minute I got vaccinated too, I kind of felt like I'm okay. No, I did my part for the human race. And um, I don't live... I was actually kind of living in fear to go outside my door and, and I was, I stayed in after I mm. got vaccinated, you know, I'm traveling like you. So I not want to push it either. You want to take it. That's your business, your response. It's personal to you and it's personal to me, whether you take it or not. It's, I don't yeah. care. Um, I care the fact if you live or die, but it's a choice you make. So that's how I feel about it. Um, <clears throat> <clears throat> so the fact that yes, I'm living my life and I'm not yes. staying inside. I'm going back out now. I'm doing the, um, whatever I like, the icon, the golf, yeah. and I'm going back out. And I hope many people will get that to say there are normal, normalcy going on out there. People are living, and even working in the medical field, it's it's work every day. It's mm -hmm. the same. We have to make sure the work continues in the medical field. So we we never stop living, but the fear was always there. I personally don't watch TV as far as watching the news so much anymore yeah. because it's a fear factor and I don't listen to it as much as I do. And even today, well, actually, we have to prepare for 9-11 um, because there was fear that the insurrection was going to happen again. So we prepare, we put on extra um, security around um, the, the, the hospital and stuff like that. But we live our life. We are living our life and we are cautious. And I yes. would just ask people to be very cautious and don't build into the fear factor and, and live. Uh, social distancing, mask, and just, yeah. just maintain cleansiness. And that's where you are, maintain your social distance. Go um, ahead, Zach. Lester. Mm. Um, first of all, Vita, I don't know if the other two um, gentlemen have told you, but you look very beautiful. You know, I like your ensemble. I like your, your pearls and stuff like that. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. Oh, no, that's right. begging money right there. Thank you. Right. <laughs> I have to. How much money? How much money? <laughs> <laughs> we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna okay. bring in Alex at some point. He said he has some views, which he wants to share. My, 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 my account number is 067. <laughs> anyway. Um, but I, I agree with all of you. Um social distancing is not normal you know and you you when the when covid just begin began and and you you're greeting you know your co-workers or friends or somebody you you kind of hesitant you don't know you don't know what to do you know um there was a mcdonald's close to where i i work and for months i passed it day and night there's nothing nobody's there yeah the, the, the drive through works for a certain um, period of time, but mm. there, you, you see no staff. 
the day that we decided to open back up, I think it's June 24th or 25th, and you see <laughs> like a crowd over there. The place just looks alive. Like the trees look greener, the road look blacker. The place, you know, you start seeing people at bus stops again. Mm. I go to the mall. With this COVID, you see all these lines in the mall that, you know, um, you walk on the left, if you're going, you walk on the right. They removed all of that. People are just intermingling. And the, the mall looks <laughs> alive, you know. And I, 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 it clicked to me to say, we need each other, you know. We, the human race, need each other. You know, we need to interact um, to see the restaurants. And, and it's just like, I know in, in Italy, you have the restaurants uh, on, the, on the place, on the, on the sidewalks, a lot of outdoor. In, in Holland, it's, it's the same. All over you saw emptiness. Now, it's full. You can't get seats. You can't get. You have to be restaurants that never usually have a <laughs> reservation. You have to be making reservations, <laughs> you know. Um, and it, it just it just felt. I, I stood in the city today, and I looked, and I'm like, "This is what the human race is 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 is, is it was was lacking." It, it felt weird seeing it again, you know. It, 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 I was like, "God, people," <laughs> you know. So yes. I think um, when history is written about this period, I think I believe one of the focus area is how our policymakers so anxiety and fear in the population, because I think that's one thing history is going to zone on. It, it wasn't let's get together and let's figure out how to fight this collectively. Together. It was this <clears throat> divide and conquer. Divide, e yeah. Even in the um, so I give you when I left, I had to pay one hundred and sixty five dollars to do a test. Right. And then when I was in Italy, it was 20 bucks. Sorry, you have to do a test in your backs. Yeah. 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 So, you, yeah, so the yeah. U.S. has this mandate. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. when you go there, right, you have to do. So, in, so I had to do I didn't have to do the test going into Italy. I could just show my vaccine card, but I chose to do the test because, you know, I wasn't sure. When coming back, even if you're a U.S. citizen, you have to have a test 48 hours before mm. in the u.s it's 165 bucks which is 140 euros yeah. in italy it was 20 bucks and eight bucks for kids so it tells you something there's a lot of people making a lot of money a lot of and money, a lot yeah. of people want the status quo mm. to continue right and i think that is driving a lot of the policy right i don't know that for certain but the fact that I could go to Italy, get the same PCR test within 15 minutes. Here, I have to wait, yes. what, um, two days to get it back or, or, or a day. So I think when we sort of move on from this topic, but I do believe history is not going to be kind to our policymakers. Because mm. I think they have, sh they have sown fear and division in our people. And I mm. think that's why you see the embrace and everybody is so want to get back to normal. I was in New York in the bars last night and the bars were packed. Every, there's nobody in that bar that was wearing it. The guy beside me was having his drink. He was just relaxing. The guy next, so everybody's is deciding yeah. to say, you know what, we're moving on, even if our policymakers yeah. are not moving on. Yeah. yeah. Right. <clears throat> and do, do you say- so I, I went to the movies, I went to the movies <laughs> this evening and um, usually they, they have like uh, you sit uh, one seat in between persons and persons were sitting yes. together, like um, a group of persons, like maybe five or six came in, they're all sitting beside each other. Usually you have to have a seat in between and persons were glad to to interact again, glad to, to, yes. to, to laugh and to, yes. you know, to say something to you, even though they don't know you, you know, and it was, it was really good. It was I, really I, good. I, I, I sense that. I, I do sense that as well. And um, whether persons are, are vaccinated or not, one of the things that I believe that September 11, then the message I, I put out uh, in, in one of my posts this morning was that September 11 galvanized the whole nation, the USA. It galvanized also foreign nations to work collectively together for one common good. And that was to read out terrorism and to go for you know, whoever they believe was the architect of it, which was bin Laden and Saddam and all those things, whether, <laughs> even though they got some of it wrong but they were collectively resolved together. And what we're finding with this pandemic now, it is creating division 
and and dividing. It's like when the Bible says, <laughs> "I come as a sword, come put um, families against each other." You, you, you see this division, and you say, "What's going on?" And, and it's so clear that there's a lack of effective leadership. And you're right, Anil. People have now just decided and say, "Listen, we're going to walk. The tail is going to walk the dog, and we're just going to go forward. We're just going to move forward. We're going to love each other." And you know, Virgin, I'll be very honest with you. I think this has made people realize that if they are not as yet, they should realize that our lives are not as um, secure as we always wanted mm -hmm. to be. And we've got to recognize that we've got to prepare ourselves, have our wills in place. When I did my will a few years ago, that day when I did it, uh, when I started to think about it, I started to say, oh, something's going to happen to me. You know, you start to, you know, to get this whole thing, you know, psychological thing. When the guy came in and I'm saying, oh my days, you know, you started to, should I drive today? <laughs> you know, this psychological thing, because it is that sort of fear complex there, you know what I'm saying? But I think that people need to. Uh, sort am, of... am, am I in the will? Am, am I in the will? <laughs> we can't tell you that. More live, the, more live in a list. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, so the, you know, mm. the, the one thing you can't do, um, yeah. you can't beat down human spirit. Mm. And I, I think for 18 months we have allowed that, and I think you see more and more collectively we are just embracing and i do believe to the point you just make you know today is promise right tomorrow is never given mm. and i do see more people who are embracing their family more and more friends and i will say to people if you haven't checked on friends in years give them a call because mm. you know you never know who you're going to get a text from to say hey guess who just dropped out right so i do believe this regardless of this period, I think one of the outcome of it is that we are all getting closer together despite everything else. Mm. So that's... O'Neill, did you I see think. my status, O'Neill? Your status says what? I, I wrote that on my status. Um, um, please check on somebody who you haven't um, seen or heard for in a while. What, what, why I wrote that is uh, I have a friend, um, she's in England, <laughs> and I haven't seen... Su Suzette is always doing this TikTok stuff. And I'm saying, I haven't seen Suzette online for like a few weeks now, which is unusual. Mm. So I just, you know, shoot out a text to her. I said, hey, hope you're okay. Hope the family's good. And she responded like immediately saying, hey, hubby and I have been done with COVID. And it was really, really bad. I thought I was going to die. I was like, oh my God. You mm. know, I... Because, I, I, you know, you took it for granted that you always seen her and then it dawned to you that I haven't seen anything from her in weeks. Mm. And she had, she and her husband had COVID and they're, they're just recovering now. And, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, I'm glad that they're, you know, getting better. You know? Yeah. I have a hypothetical <clears throat> question. And um, again, I, I might rub someone the wrong way. But the fear that we all live in, is, the, is it the fear of debt? Because it's one thing that's guaranteed. So is it the fear of debt before we are ready? As you said, Timor, I had my will done a long time ago. I just have mm. to rechange time. You know, depends on who pissed me off. But, <laughs> but, well, let's, but let's, I think he's in it. He made some nice comments about you. So uh, let's the name is still in there, I presume. <laughs> but the fact is that fear. We fear something that it's going to happen anyway. So I, when I look at that and I said, wait a minute, why are we fearing that it's going to happen? It's how we live our life. If we live healthy, we have no mm. control over that. Whether COVID or if we drive or if we walk, some people get died um, sleeping, get shot or whatever the case is, it happens. <laughs> so the, the fact is that if you take away the fear, take away the fear of death and continue to live your life, not carelessly, but it's something that it's going to happen. Eventually, it's going to happen. So why live in fear? Yes. No, but what, what I think, Vita, to, to, to try to answer your, your question, um, to play the devil's advocate, uh, the devil, um, but the, it is, the, it is the, the world has never been confronted. Well, this modern era has never been confronted with collective fear like this. You know, you have... You have a, a, um, famine in, in Somalia, or you have flooding in Indonesia, but the, the world is facing the same threat at once. 
Mm. So we have we, we we don't know what it is. Remember, we can't see it, we can't feel it, and then you see persons who you thought were healthy dying. You know, persons who were famous and prominent dying, and you're like, wow. I mean, for me, I I hardly wear mask. <laughs> if I go somewhere, they have to enforce that I wear mask. You know, I haven't been vaccinated. I I I just go about my life as, as normal. Um, so the fear factor doesn't affect me. But what I'm saying, that when you hear people around you talking about these things, it is the collective fear of the human race facing this unknown factor all at once. You know, so it, it, it brings to, 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 to reality that we are uh, mortal. We, we don't think about our, our mortality on we're a regular day. Very, very vulnerable, as you're saying, Esther. Yeah. 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 No. But- that if you can take away the fact that it's it's a known factor, mm. then you will lose that fear. What are you so, afraid of? So and a matter of fact, none of us know what happens when we die. So why be afraid of the unknown? Because that's what holds a lot of us back, even for success, even in life. The fear of the unknown, so you de- therefore you don't go forward and do what you have to do. It's the same thing with the COVID, that we are stuck in this rut, uh, and then we push the fear among the people and social media and all that. And that's even with uh, even before COVID, there was a lot of people with anxiety and the, the mental factor. It's the fear of the unknown, and that's what we need to help our brothers and sisters, letting them know: hey, it's okay. You don't have to be fear anything. Mm. It's so, fear of so, unknown. So the, the one thing I live with: never worry about the things you can't control. There yeah. you go. Okay, it, you know you can't control certain things, and the one thing that is inevitable among anybody it doesn't matter if you're a billionaire. You have one, two cents. There's one thing that is inevitable. We're all mm. going to die. Yes. The question becomes how you live your life. Oh, and that's you. why I always say, yeah, it's not what you do for yourself. It's what you do for others. And if you live your life in that mantra, you'll be fine. E- even in the middle of COVID, I have friends mm. who are going out, <clears throat> we're embracing each other. Because you, you still be cautious, but at the same time, there are people that you could live. And don't worry about it. At the end of the day, mm. I can't control the rain. I can't control snow. What I could do is plan for it. And that's what we all yeah. have to do. And that, right? and that is, and hope- and that, yeah, and, and that is true because everybody has their sort of uh, belief. Everybody has their sort of spiritual inkling. Uh, some will believe that um, there's heaven, there's hell, that if they die... Um, some believe that um, it is appointed for man to die once, then to face the maker, or if God comes beforehand, because many people are looking up now and actually are actually saying that, hey, you know, is, you know, is it is it, it is it the revelation which is unfolding before our eyes? Is it is it the um, a dry run for the six six six? You know, everybody is looking at it. so it it is like you look at it this way and said, are we in a, a political zone? That is, politics going to take us out. Are we actually transcending into the biblical era? The, yes. the start and to the end, yes. you know? That's the sort my of next thing level, you know. Yeah. I, I'm not dying, Seymour. This is my, I'm, if, I, if, if I lose the breath <laughs> out of this body now, I'm going to transcend into another level. So, no, I'm not fear of this life. I'm living the best <laughs> life right now. And I yeah. might see you in the next term, uh, in the next um, level, Seymour. Yeah. Well, you see, you it, use it, the word Vita. I'm transcending into the computer. That's why I'm so big on AI. So you, you watch the, the, the move of transcendent. That's what's going to happen. You know, technology is going to allow me to live on for a long time. Even if the body dies, the mind will still be here. The mind, yes, it's another level, <laughs> another dementia, Seymour. So, yeah. the, the th- so we're the gonna... thing, the, the thing about it is that um, I always think of Martin Luther King and um, when he says, I've been to the mountain top of I've seen. My eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. And what he actually was at that peace. He was at that peace. People believe that he saw God. It was, he was at that peace that he was ready to meet his maker. He has done and he has this level of peace to go forward. And I believe as well that persons will have to somehow reach to a level of peace and recognize and confront themselves. That's what COVID did. You know, we, we've got to look at the, the positive aspects of COVID in the in the way it confronted us, that we have to face ourselves, look in the mirror, who am I? Look at your wife and your children and say, 
who are they? Because people who aren't knowing their family, people are just going all over the place every day, autopilot, bam, bam, out, grab a sandwich. I never forget one time I was working at a local authority and I would get up in the morning, jump on a train, take another train. And by the time I reach there and finish, I'm back home, reach home at nine o'clock. By the time I sit back down, I wake up and say, oh, shucks, I got to get back out again. I saw a commercial one time where this guy went in, lie down, didn't bathe. That wasn't me. Just put a disclaimer there. <laughs> went in bed. And I'm Jamaican. I'm from Ochoa, so we'll be it all over. Left, right, and center 10 times We have today. water. We're not tired. We have water. We have water. I just want to drop that one there. Drop that one there before let's uh, come in and say nothing, you know? And the guy would lay down and don't bathe and get up and back to work. And, and, I, and, I, think, and I think what COVID has done, it has challenged us to actually... Um, my face. What is this on my face? Your, your face. Exactly. Your, your, your face in your makeup. What was that? I saw something else on my face. I, I, I'm like, like, what is happening to you? I'm like, what is happening to your face? <laughs> you're transcending. You're transcending. You're transcending. transcending. When you say you're transcending. You're when transcending you and it's just not happening. We thought you were doing that. I when you didn't when you're touch anything. When, no, when you say, who am I? Then I said, the girl, I'm sugar. Yeah, being a man. <laughs> <laughs> And you're starting to you're starting to metamorphose into all kind of different Man, things. I was I was I was, yeah, I, was, I, was I was like I thought you were but, but Javita did, did you see me do this? He's doing it. Yeah, yeah I'm doing that. He's now. doing it. No, but I don't know. You see, you see, you see, it's less than being a man is in London, so when that's how you get home who am I? So that's why he's trying to show yeah, you but, different but, faces. But 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 O'Neill, O'Neill, did you see he he put on the old dog too? Old dog like, like me, yeah. <laughs> 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 you, know, you know, the last time Beanie Man was in the last time, you are something else. The last time Beanie Man was in London and uh, with Black Adrian and all those guys were down by Bricks and then I went down there and all of a sudden you see everybody rushing after somebody. Guess what? Somebody teeth him teeth him wash off I'm not. <laughs> and man, I run after the guy and in one other place I jump up and say, Hey, me and the girl them sugar, a man just grab him watch. <laughs> 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 Uh, got beat. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, but anyway, guys. I think I think it's, it has been something like thirteen years. He has been in London. He has not been in London. Well, it, it could be around that same time. I wouldn't yeah. be surprised. Well, it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But anyway, guys, listen. Um, before we bring in anybody else, um, let's just talk about um September 11. And first of all, I, what I did, the question I put was, <clears throat> where were you, and what was it like when you saw <clears throat> or experienced that moment? <clears throat> And uh, ladies first, I'll start with Vita because I think you're close by or something like that, yeah. Yeah, so 9-11, I was in New York. I was in Long Island, New York. And I remember I was just going to Winthrop. My husband was dropping me off at work at the Winthrop Hospital. And they just like this, the, the police stop us and it was a standstill, no one can move. And I mean, and I don't know if you're familiar. Only, how far you think is Long Island from Manhattan? Uh, maybe 20 it's 40. miles? Yeah, uh, 36 miles from 100. Okay, so, right, we're 36 miles away, but we could look up and see everything in the air, the smoke, the fire, the <coughs> debris was just going on. So we were all sent home that day, and it was just in fear because we were not sure, was it a, an attack in America? We, we did not know what it was. So we were all just inside. Well, we're not inside. We were just home wondering what was happening. And mm. then after that, for about six months, from that day onwards, New York was like a, um, a, a war zone. There were soldiers everywhere. When you go into the, the anywhere you go in, there's like soldiers all around with guns. It it was like a war, like you were living in war every day, and um, it was a very frightening time. Very very frightening time. Um, what I noticed also was that all of us were more loving, we appreciate each other more. It was like we were just one America. And and that's what I remember out of New um, 9-11. Yeah. I think, you know, one other thing I always say, you know, much kudos to the police officers and the firefighters. Mm. Um, because, you know, 9-11 was a place, I was getting ready to go to one Penn Plaza. Oh, wow. Um, and I was up in, if, if folks know New York, there was a small plane that hit the tower I forgot when. Um, so when the first one hit, I I was about to go out the house. I'm like, huh, what's going on here? I'm like, oh, just another pilot just got lost. 
Mm-hmm. And then um, mm-hmm. after that, the second one hit, I'm like, okay, something is really going on. And then what was evident back then, because a lot of people had their BlackBerry, everything, there's no communication, right? And then I didn't go to one pen. I went to the office um, in Westbury. In, in the office, we had a lot of our employees whose husband and wife was either police officers or firefighters. Mm. And some of them, the last text message or the last message they got was them running into the building. Yes. And after that, it was, you know, as Vita said, you know, it was a militarized <clears throat> zone because everything got shut down. Yes. If, if there was a flight in there, it got shut down. And, and New York changed forever. And yes. the United States changed forever. And I remember, you know, George Bush come in the other day because a lot of folks didn't realize that, I forgot what, if the plane from Boston, it had so many, so much fuel in it that it was what melt the steel and collapsed the building. Okay. And then for weeks, it was just people trying to volunteer to mm-hmm. dig through the rubble. Right. Mm-hmm. And you hear stories of heroism. You hear all the story. And that's where our country sort of bond together. Because I remember the next day, it was, we had a small office, about 200 people. And the next day, you know, I remember Christy, she did not hear from our husband that night. And everybody was just hoping. And then it was, Stories after that, stories after that. Mm. Um, it, was, it was a tough moment, but we, New York bonded. Giuliani was the, um, the mayor. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I saw some yes. clips. Uh, yeah. And yeah, you know, he really stepped up. Um, yes. And, and knowing New Yorkers too, the other thing is that there's a ton of New Yorkers was going towards the building, right? Because a lot of times when we see trouble, we go towards trouble, right? Yes. Mm. yes. So a lot of folks, a lot of my friends, they were going towards the building. To say, just to take to see what was going on, because everyone thought that it was 1993 all over again, that the building would would stand, and we're here 20 years later. Um, but I think that was a a transition point mm. for our country. You know, we look at the fact that, for example, simple things you could go kiss your loved one just before yeah. they go up <clears> to <throat> the gate and fly mm. somewhere. You remember, you go all the way into the airport. Yes. All of that changed, right? Shoes and as we well. As, people, have, people have to take off their shoes. These, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and we, we came together as a country. And, you know, it didn't ma- matter around our politics. Yes. What, what bonded us together was that we were Americans. And not only that, the world came together. Remember, it's the first time NATO invoked the, the alliance. You know, attack against one member is attack against all. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Every mm-hmm. person came together. And... You know, we rally as a country. And yes. unfortunately, you know, where we are today, we're more divided than ever. But that was a period of time that we were so together. And I'll give a story. My grandmother was here from Jamaica. Mm. The day before, my aunt took her, because remember the restaurant on the top of the World Trade Center? Yeah, it was uh, there. I forgot the name of it. it. The one that goes around when you go, yes, it is um, really. So the, the same time the plane hit, my grandmother, the day before, was in the towers. And I remember what? my grandmother, it was the last time she came to New York because she said she will never fly again. Yes. And I remember we had to get her from New York to Atlanta because my grandma will sit there and watch television all day. Mm. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's to the point you make, so far, it's a time we'll live in each of our memories to say where we were. Yeah. But I think it's one of where history we sort of write and say, this was a time that we bonded as a country and we came together in my lifetime as it was one. So that was I, I, sort yeah. of 911. I saw Maggie says, uh, Maggie online, I was at home doing my nine to five job. Let's say you, you're born that time, weren't you? What, what were you? <laughs> you're born? Yes, you're born. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't remember if it was a Saturday. Was it a Saturday? No, no, it was a work day. It was a working day. It's a working, day. Yeah. It's a working either Wednesday or, th- or, or Thursday. Thursday. It was yeah. a Thursday because yeah. I was going to work here. Yeah. Mm. All right. I was also on my way. I was working at JPS at the time. 
um, I was doing security at JPS on Orange Street for those who are in the, the capital city of Kingston. That's Jamaica People yes. Service, right? <laughs> JPS. Wow, really? <laughs> <laughs> so, I, so I was on Orange Street walking up. A co-worker was coming down and he was hysterical. You know, the world, the world are mash up. The world are mash up. And I'm like, what, what are you talking? He didn't even stop. I saw another co-worker on her phone just screaming and I'm like, what is happening? Don't you have a TV? I said, what is happening? Yes. You know, and I see people on the other side of the street running like crazy. And I'm like, what is happening? And she said to me, <laughs> The World Trade Center is on fire. Yes. I'm like, the World Trade Center? Uh, whatever. You know? And I, when I got into work, everybody was surrounding. We had a small TV. Everybody was surrounding the TV. And I'm like... So I, I look over my supervisor's shoulder, and I saw the first tower um, um, on fire. I'm like, what the hell? And they said that a plane hit it. I, I said, but that's a no-fly no -fly zone for planes. No-fly zone, mm -hmm. yes. Right? And they, they like, you know, like, you, you, I automatically gave a fuck that nobody else knew, and they all turned and look at me, mm -hmm. you know? And I, then we saw the other plane hit it. I'm like, shit. Mm. So Sugar. for me, I'm saying, mm. I'm, I'm, I'm saying, I, I immediately say, where are the F-19s? You know, like, where are the fighter jets? You know, that's yeah. what I, I keep saying. Right, right. And you <laughs> felt a sense of, for me, a sense of defeat because this is New York. This is United States of America, the biggest empire in the world. What is happening? You know? And I, I, I said, I was like, I called my brother in, 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 living in New York. I couldn't get him. I'm like, Jesus Christ, is he dead? <laughs> you know? Mm. But this is happening in Manhattan. He's in New York. You know, he's very far away from where it was. But you felt a sense of openness, of vulnerability, because this is U.S. You know, this is not supposed to happen in the U.S. Mm. Um, and I said, this is going to affect the world. The world is going to change. My mom called me and asked me if I'm seeing, um, if I'm seeing what's happening. I said, yes. I said, mom, this is going to change the world. Mm. And, it, and it, it, it affected entertainment. A lot of tours were cancelled for, yes. for, for, for a lot of artists. A lot of songs that were, that were going to go... I can't remember the name of the artist now. That was going to go, bam! And because of 9-11, the promotion got to shut down and stuff like that. You know, many, many trade, many... A lot of things affected every aspect of, every aspect. of, 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 mm. of, of life in the world. Not just in the US, but in the world. Yes. You know? So it was a, it was a very lost, daunting, daunting thing to see. I lost a couple of friends because what happened is that um, working in the hospital, um, at the time I think it was a caseworker, and I worked with Blue Cross Blue Shield was was stationed in that in that building. Um, that office got wiped out, so I know a lot of people that passed in nine eleven. Um, so that was a factor. What I remember was that one of the situations we thought America was being attacked. Mm. That was at that. It, only you must remember the Pentagon got hit. Remember there was a third yeah. plane. Yeah. So yeah. We thought with the yeah. Pentagon hit, we thought that there it is the main spot, and America was at war. So it was a very fearful time. Very fearful time. Yeah. Um, well, Vita, one of my friends, um, she worked in the tower, and she got reprimanded by her boss the day before for coming to work late. And he was saying to her, you Jamaicans are always operating on Jamaica time. You're always late. Mm. She was late again the next day. So Jamaica time saver. She was saver. late again. And Jamaica there's a time lot of saving. stories. Mm. There's a lot of stories of people who either were late or something happened that detoured them from going detour to work them. or yeah. detoured yeah. at that time. Yeah. There was a lot of stories as far as... A lot of stories, yeah. 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 And I and I think to the point you just made, there was Shanksville, Pennsylvania. So that was the plane that there was a theory that plane was heading towards the capital. So yeah. there's a set of planes that left Boston. There's the two that hit the tower. This one was overpowered and uh, crashed in Shanksville. And then the one that hit yeah. the uh, Pentagon. And there's a lot Pentagon, of stories yeah. in, in the Pentagon. And you should see, it's the first time you see fire in that building. <clears throat> and I think it was 186 yeah. people who were killed yeah. in the Pentagon. And it, it, it mobilized. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's no, interesting. Um, yeah, it's interesting because I just came back from Jamaica. I think it was maybe a couple of days before or a day before. So I, I just got married. Um, came back with my brand new wife, 2001. <laughs> brand new wife? You got the old one? <laughs> <laughs> brand new All right, wife was, brand new wife right, still, still, still brand new <laughs> brand new brand new and um i was we're there moving stuff and getting into the place that we we're going to and uh and i saw the plane went in and i said cool i'll never forget i said cool I think it was a movie you know that movie. You know that movie there with um, Arnold Schwarzenegger, the one with the plane went. I think that's one of the first. I think that's where those guys got those ideas from. You know, that Arnold Schwarzenegger movie, and I said, "Cool." And then I saw the second plane. I said, "Hang on a second. So I never forget that moment. I was standing there, and the TV was on. At that moment, just like when Princess Diana passed away. I remember yes, where I was a lordship where... lane in 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 Southern yeah. in yeah. Dulwich. Yeah. yeah, and I remember that. Did you cry? Did you cry? Cry. I did. No, only did when Michael, cry? only Michael Jackson. When Michael Jackson. Yeah, no, I, I cried when Michael Jackson. Michael died. Jackson I, and Peter Bryson. Yeah. No, I cried <laughs> for that. I cried for Dirty Diana. Bad man, I cried. <laughs> Bad <laughs> man, I cried. Gaza man, I cried. Bad man. So, so, Anil, I must say. The trip that you took, that you weren't. I have to play some music for that one. Yes, that was your happy place, and it looked like it was genuine. So I must say, I love it. I must, I love the new O'Neill. Uh, all right, O'Neill, so, can you share the name of the therapist? After what? The name of the therapist that you are seeing. Cause you're doing great. It has a. Five letter world is called wine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, 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 go I'm going to do I'm five letter? Five letter word wine. No, four. Yeah. Sorry. Four. Yeah. Uh, O'Neill. No, I was I thinking, a... no, you, I was thinking wine and go down there with, with spice. <laughs> so, so it's double H. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> is it Jamaica wine? Why? I was thinking, why not go down? Go down, go down, go down, go down. Why not go down there? Why not go down there? Why not go down there? But the one thing I, I would also yeah. say with 9 11 is that the, the, the history would say it changed the world. Yeah. And I don't know if it changed the world in a good or bad way. Yeah. Um, I think history will, will play. Yeah. play I, 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 want to bring, I want to bring in Alex. I want to bring in Alex. Okay. Um, I, need, I need to refill. <laughs> refill and then we, we do some switch around okay so Vito you, you come back after you refill keep okay. keep keep the pearl around the neck okay <laughs> <laughs> okay let me just do something here I have to go out <laughs> you're going out okay I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna invite so I'm gonna invite some more people so Daniel. so as you know as you're invited I do believe history will go back and, and it's interesting that we drove out the Taliban out of Afghanistan and 9-11 that they're back. And I do believe <clears throat> history will also say somehow we didn't take that opportunity of that togetherness mm. to change the world in a way that is equitable for everybody. Mm. I, I think there's a consensus from, you know, the European Union, you know, the UK. I, I think if my memory served me right, Yes. Almost every world leader within the space of two weeks <clears throat> of the 9-11 mm. um, event was in the White House visiting yeah. and, and, and sort of pledged their allegiance, allegiance to, 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 to what to Bush. we, Bush yeah. and the American. Um, so it's, a, it's an interesting um, sort of thought. Old dog. Yeah. Exercise. Let, let, old, old, old dog. Like, sorry. Is that Alex? <laughs> <laughs> Alex, what's up, Alex? <laughs> Alex, what's up, buddy? Hello, my loyal. Let me play some music. Let me play, play some music for you. Let me play some music. What What are you drinking, boss? Yeah, some tater cash. We're drinking. We're drinking apple juice. You're right. And I'm drinking coconut water. 
Well, I, I, Boy, I tell you. First of all, Alex. Hold on, Alex. Alex, no, hold on, Alex. I've been listening, I've been listening to the program. Alex, you know. hold on, Alex. I've been Alex, listening to the program, Alex. and I want to see a fight. A Alex, hold on, Alex. Hold on. You know you Congratulations to you. Congratulations to you. You're quite a bit of things, Dan. Congratulations to you, Alex, right? on your recent um marriage, wedding. Congratulations, boss. But hold on, the man don't want you to announce that. No, but let me pick him up. In the in the over Facebook with it. But the man they're over Facebook with it. In the all over Facebook with it. Listen. <laughs> Instagram. The guy wanted to come in and and and, 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 and run the show, run the boat. You know the man I run a boat? You just start oh, the boat before. I'm, 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 I'm big leagues in the north. Mister, in Mister, Lester, leagues, you just Lester, you just put the man things out there. But the man have big leagues, no. It's gonna get big more and be like Alex. <laughs> Boy, I'm telling you, you know. Go ahead, your worship. Boy, I'm telling you, you know. You just, you just, you just don't talk and just tell the world what it is. Eh? Why, I tell you. Eh? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> and to the record, like, there is nothing there on the social media. Right? There is nothing there on the social media. So, yeah. If me and you are bridging, bridging, you know certain things. So, you know, you have a company like that, don't tell the world. It can't be, it can't be all bad all your life, you know. No, man, I'm, that is not the case. But, yes, thank you so much for the, um, the wishes, right, towards my new um, situation, marriage and my new queen. No, the king never have a situation. We are the pardon and to the family. My legacy will live yes. on. But, the fact of the matter is, I hear you guys talking about September 11th. I hear you talking about the vaccine. I hear you talking about it. And listen up. The commoners for, for, of the government. Uh, sorry, sorry. Of that's, the structure. That's Alex, so Alex, you have, you have Alex, different Alex, levels Alex, of Alex, order. Alex, and people... One, one, some, some eh. little sort of um, logistics. You say the word V because we have had some issues in the past. Say the word V when you mention certain words. Well, like no, commoners, no, 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 all right, no, no, let me change no, the word no, from no, commoners no, 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 to ordinary people. Say the word V. We have had some shutdown sometime when we talk about these things with Instagram. Yeah, man, when I talk yes, about the, the v, v, that's it. Right? When I talk about the V, yes. V, V, or the picky, or right? Picky, the fact is, whatever you're going to call it. The fact is, you know, listen, listen very carefully. In the society order, there is government within mm -hmm. government, right? The fact is, your government in the United States of America and the Italian government, they are still farming from the Roman Empire. That is why it is always about money and suppressing people and a whole. That's why they have attempts and all these things. But we're not going to that. This is why your vaccination result will come faster because they have systems in place to facilitate the whole of this thing. Right? The thing is, it is nothing to do with you getting a better life and getting back to life. Right? So when I hear all them things, that, that is the stupidity. You are a king. You are a god. And how can you have a government whether overseas or local and a man tell about no movement there? You can't go this, you can't that. No government can't tell me where to go. And anytime I feel like I go about my business, I go about my business. I am my own government. Self-government. Next thing you need to understand, about September 11, it is war. Mm. So I had no empathy for no side. Both the Afghanistan or the Middle East people or the Americans. When you go to war, you go to war. Both people dead from both sides. <laughs> and that's how it is. So I hear you guys talking in a cavalier manner about, oh, I'm sorry to hear people dead and all them things. Who cares about that? You think your government care about that? They don't think about that. You're just a pawn to them. I am a king. And therefore, if I have my soldiers, I will send them out to die. And collateral damage has to be done. So you think about that. So I have no regrets. And the fact is, with all these things that is happening and all these things, I could care less. I could care less. The government in the United States and the NATO members, they are all intergovernment. We all depend on each other. But it's one fraternity. Yeah. Let me tell you mm. straight. So the commoners or the ordinary people, oh, I'm sorry to hear that. We sympathize, but the moral context is of it. We want the natural resources. Can, can, I, can I go back? Can I go back to Next the point thing. when you mentioned about the, the September 11th? You're ah. saying that it was a war that created that? Of course. Then if you invade a man country, it's like a man mm. coming here and mm. kick off the door. Then if you have a cutlass in there and knife or whatever, and kill him. Mm. Then if a man come to my door right now 
I mean, no, no, I mean, never welcome in. Inside. Mm. You know, war, man. So when I invade the people of the country, by but, all but, means, but, but, you know, when you're in a term of war, by all means, people are yeah. using tools of but all sorts. Who's, who's country? Well, who's country? And people, also, people can I was not here. Who's country? And I, and I wasn't there. So the fact is, my opinion is, I was not there. And if it was an internal thing by the Bush administration, which is the government, because whichever government come out of power are in power, they're just picking up the agenda of the last government. So all of the government is the same. So, <coughs> so the fact is, it is of the nature. I don't know if it's an internal thing, right? I don't know if it's a case baby. But by all means, people have to defend themselves. And nobody cares about the empire in the United States. It's just an extension of the British so, Empire. So, O'Neill, so, 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 go ahead. So, so, go ahead, O'Neill. Like before, before we when can... you look, when you look so, in the so, Middle East right now, there is no... Listen, so, in the Middle East, there is no <laughs> benefits of the invasion. There is so, none. So, so, Alex, Alex none. so before, let's make sure we have dialogue. So, number one, mm. you know, for everybody, 9-11 was real, right? It was, it was a real event that, that has nothing to do with internal. And what I don't want is conspiracy. But you work with the what government. I don't no, want. Alex, Alex. You the question. Alex, you work with the government. Alex, what I, what I, you don't know what that. I don't assumption. want, what you don't I don't know want that. is conspiracy theory. Alex, I spend, I spend, no, I, I, I'm I spend. I'm not doing conspiracy. I'm saying if you're speaking yeah, definitively, so I spend time in anything. You cannot be so, definitive so about I'm anything. Gonna, that's, we all make an so, assumption because we're, we're somewhere so, else. That's so you can make the assumption. I'm going to say we're not going to deal with conspiracy theory. 9-11 did happen. It's not internal. And, and, then and it, so, on, the US never that answer, that never so people over there never did. The United States of America and the British and the CNN and the Fox News and the Morning News, they are highlighting the misfortune of people thousand people dead. How much millions of people dead are the military? They report for all about that? Alex. No. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. In a war, you are always going to have casualties. So you are going to when, when war When U.S. get licked, U.S. get licked. And when U.S. get licked, U.S. Yeah. Good. You get some lick too. All right, Alex. So, 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 3,000 innocent people Whatever. I care about, I empathize about. The, 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 Assuming the, that 3,000 are the innocent. Assuming Alex, that 3,000 are the innocent. Alex, Alex um, you, you gotta stop. So, Alex, I Alex I really, you gotta stop or you gotta leave the show. I'm serious. You, you gotta. No, I just want to believe this war comes to the show in about me. Have yeah, but, but you gotta listen sometimes. Let's, you, let's, gotta, let's, you gotta listen. I am listening. But you gotta listen I am listening. And stop I am listening. Talk. Right? Okay, I so my point for folks who are listening, these were 3,000 innocent people who worked in the towers, right? So I don't want this to say this is a conspiracy theory. It did happen. These are 3,000 wives, husband, fathers, dad. We know so, that the boss, man. So I don't want you to, to, to sort of say, hey, we don't know. The so. narrative what I'm painting is that we are at war. Both countries at war. My view is that once two countries at war, and people get dead, I right. so war. So, so you make that point. So that wasn't so. so, so okay. My opinion is I, when I so, say about nine eleven, there's so no I, empathy in the family. Who are people that come with that? So it was no war. We we yeah. had um, an attack. Asymmetrical warfare attack. If 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 you, if you go back in history and look at that term. Mm -hmm. And we responded as we should. Now you could all argue after about the response, but I want folks to understand this was real. You know, there are people who lost their mothers. Listen, it was real when the United States invaded the people in the Middle East. That was Alex, real. Alex, too. Okay, reset. Let's yeah, reset that. for a moment. Let's reset for a moment. Let's let's just pause for a moment. Um, what are you guys drinking? I'm drinking. I probably I'm need to drink some rum. I know that I'm drinking. <laughs> okay. Right. It's all right. Okay. You okay, can live with that. So okay, I don't need okay. to leave the no. show. Okay. But you need to, Alex, you need to listen. Alex, hear me out now for a second, everybody. The, the topic that we the topic that I'm we listening. said for the show was uh, remembering September 11 and um, where we were. Now, no one is disputing the fact that there is war or there's issues between different the countries. Okay. 
what we're talking about is these persons who passed away and we're asking persons, what was it that they um, remembered? People want to empathize. Right. Some want to sympathize. Who don't want to? That's them. But we can't force that down in the body chart. So what we're talking about is respecting different persons' views. And if, and, you know, if we're going to have a show, this, there can be another show as to what caused September 11th. And I will agree with you that when America go into people country and bomb up the place and stuff like that, there's going to be some repercussion. I believe at the same time with the Taliban and what is happening, that there could be some terrorist people who are in the batch of people coming into the United States of America as well. But, but that's not the discussion today. You know what I'm trying to say? But I hear what you say. The discussion today at this point now is talking about remembering September 11th, what we have learned from it. You know, you know, Alex, but... I, yeah, man. Can I say something? Yeah, yes or no? Yeah, man. Can I say run, something? Run, run it. Run it. Uh, watch watch or listen. You want to remember September 11th? Watch it. Just like how you want to remember September 11th is just the same narrative as you want to remember that you're a black man in the United States of America. I don't want to remember nothing about you 11th of September. That done dead and gone already. Yeah. Hear that? So the king said that. We know why you're not about September 11. September 11 can't change. September 11 gone. That so done. So nobody come to hell in this and feel like some good severity. I will not condone with you. Let me tell you this. Just like when you're a black man in America, I see him with them on the September 11. It done gone bad already. And you can't wait. I got them as a So, in the end of the day, I don't. Don't, that's it. So, we don't need to remind you that we're black. We don't remind you that we have a place to play. We don't need to remember certain value. What we need to remember is no, and what is happening with no, and with the vaccine and the government of intergovernment that is masterminding the people, the killer of people. That is the start of we can't talk about something by them. That don't are, you trying, are, you, are, you, are, you, are you trying to but say that? Is. Are you it trying to say is. that one should not recognize aspects of the past and acknowledge what is the message from that or what you can learn from that? Then the case maybe the doctor that tells that could be a man to not <laughs> dwell on the past. Uh, nobody's dwelling on something. It's one is actually remembering and acknowledging something and what we can learn from it. One of the things that we spoke about earlier, Alex, before you came, was that. The world came together. There was a united front. Whether we, no, no, no the world no, never came together. No, this no, that's a misconception. Not the world come together. Okay, okay. Forces, the forces, forces came together. Forces came together, <laughs> forces, good, forces good, came together collectively. Forces came together collectively, and the United States was together. And we're talking about how the pandemic has split the world, and people are divided. But you see, what what I don't want to get into, Alex, is um, a, a discussion which is not what we want to talk about today. But I hear what you're saying, and your point is made very clear. Yeah, but as I said, yeah. thing, people want to acknowledge September 11th that whatever yeah. people ask them live and think. But this show is a controversial show. This show is one of the best shows right yeah. now around town, where a man can send views. I am of the order of I am a king. I speak my mm -hmm. mind freely, with no subjects and appeals, no yeah. crown. Yes. And me never left my birth country and pledge my allegiance. No problem. What we have to tell the world at large is this. Your Once voice gone. War, any game can play. <laughs> and that's why not be doing September 11 or any, any other thing of the past that is he, he, um, so, um, so pain so and suffering. So what we should, what, what we should, well, let me finish part. What we should be focusing on <laughs> eh, is how oh, everybody can get so, uh, uh, what? And then everybody will talk about that. Everybody can have some free food. <laughs> huh? That's what we should be talking about. So, we should be talking about things that the government of the United States should do <laughs> and the member NATO members are giving people money and a fair trade or people can have more so, food to eat. And then, them call that day, one day went <laughs> down, money was given to the world. How about that? You know so, what I'm going to start so, this so, and People dead already. Them not feelings. My God done them, them already. <laughs> them dead, them gone. They're not a feeling. That's just the truth about it. So if you don't like me because we tell the truth, you don't have to like me. I swear. And tell, and tell Biden that, tell Trump that, tell Obama that. Uh, tell the king of Jamaica, tell him that. Say no, Neil. 
No, I said you you have to know your history because if you if you forget your history, then you don't have a future. Um, and at the end of the day, you know, yeah, everybody has different views, and and I, I'll say, you know, the great Patrick Moynihan, the senator from New York, said everybody's entitled to their own opinion, but not their own facts, right? So, I, I will say that, right? Th th this is we're reflecting up on nine eleven. And there's many topics that you have talked about. Yes, there's other shows that we could talk about how the world could come together to make everybody whole. That, that, that's not the show today. The show is mm. around 9-11, yes. how we reflect upon it. And as we look back at 9-11, we empathize with the family and we look forward to say that was a new era for us, not only in the U.S., but also around the world. You know, I mentioned before you came on in Jamaica or anywhere else, you could walk up to an airport, walk up to the gate and wave and kiss your family goodbye. You can't do that anymore. Right. That's that's a change. There are things that September 11 has ushered in that impact you today, that impact me today mm. that you can't change. Right. The history will look upon that and say that's a moment in time when we, the world has changed. You can't go into any country that is not impacted by 9-11. If, if, if there's a country... Yeah, because the fact is, because the governments are working together behind a shadow government, and that's a fact, because that is why they have NATO members, G summits, and all these things are intergovernment, that the agenda of you as a civilian is broader mm. in that context. And I want to say this more. It is no view of a view that, yes, you could have walked in at the airport and said bye to your people and all these things. But we know as technology involved, people are being suppressed. You're going to have rebellion. So the security will have to be for my friend. And when you have a country like United States of America, that is a world bully, which part you live right now, I mean, I expect you to say nothing bad about your country coming out and coming here. Yeah. But when I say the answer is, come look for you now. Them people. <laughs> so they can't come look for me. They will go with them and give them a cup of water. They will go happy to give them a cup of water. But here I go on. Real talk. Those people, those people have their best interests at heart. That is the reason why you can have the luxury of the things that you think you have. And they are always, the narrative, and the purpose of a country like the United States is to exploit other countries, just like the crown of England. So what I'm saying to you is this. In war, we're going to have casualties, but we should not dwell on that. And also, since as 9-11, I remember, I'm trying to make next day, 12 of December, um, September, the day went and they actually come together. People only coming together because of fear. Mm. If we find out that we have a next life form than human and planet Earth here, you're going to find that the world itself to fight against is that alien, wherever it's coming from. We yeah. are the wickedest disease on Earth because we as human, including me, including me, is that we are always trying to get ahead of somebody else. in some way, business, academia, whatever the case may be. But the fact is, United States of America had it coming to them. Alex, Alex, hold on. Alex, hold on, hold on, hold on. It's just Alex, what? hold on. All right. Um, hear what you're saying, right? I understand hey. what you're saying. What I don't think you are understanding is that we are not discussing that tonight. What we are saying is that person over 3,000 odd persons lost their lives, right? Whether it is was it was an American plan or a Taliban plan or a whomever, that is not the issue here. We are saying that persons actually lost friends, co-workers, husbands, sons, daughters, right? So these weren't the persons who were involved in the, in the attack or the plan. We are reflecting. Yeah, but I'm no, getting benefit. No, no, no. Okay, okay. 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 Alex, I'm losing the will to live. I'm losing the will to live. <laughs> Alex, Alex, Alex you have I have no sympathy for the US, and I can't come up for the show. I don't have no sympathy Alex. for the US. Alex. I don't have no sympathy for the US. It is Alex. war. Yeah. Let's, let's Talking start. to a soldier. Start. We don't business soldier. War is war. Thank you. People dead. Thank you, Alex. All right. We're going to. We're going to.
shift now. Alex, where are you going? Alex? Yeah, man, we go. All right. Bye bye. Thank you, man. War is war. People <laughs> Thank you for the contribution, That's... Alex, as usual. All right, bro. <laughs> yes, man, as always. Very controversial. No, no, no. no, 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 no you don't no, like it. You don't like it. The views are, are, are valid. You know? Okay. Okay. <laughs> then, what side are we knowing now? Oh, shucks. <laughs> he, he went before I could do that. Yeah. Um, I just want to make sure that. <laughs> Get up, stand up. You see, stand I, I, up I think, for you, right? I, I think the important thing about it is that all views content. Alex has views. We all have views, and so like that. Um, I, I, Hello, I everyone. I, I, I think. I think. Are we having an echo? Hello. Yes. Let's see if it's. Let's see. Thank There's you. an echo. Because I, I am using the Bluetooth in my car. I think it's. I apologize. One two one two. Echo is gone. Yep. Sandra, yeah. Sandy, you're good. You're good, Sandy. Sandy. I'm good. Hi. Hi everyone. Okay. Good. Welcome. Sand Sandy, um before we, before I, I pick up on the point I was gonna say, what are you drinking? She in our car still burn. A water. No, no, some people drink rum and let them care now. <laughs> No. <laughs> Jordan, Jordy, 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 Jordy keep rum. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Jordy Lester, 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 you know, Silburn says some people, she never, he never call none of them. He never call none of them. They're in power. Lester, Lester. They're in power. Lester, Lester, you be careful, you know, man. You have messed up people's business and life, you know. You see, you see, you see what them do? Them say, as uh, stitches, snitches get stitches. You mess up the police, man. You mess up the police last week. You call yourself the police. You mess up the you police. Know, you, you need to generalize, Lester. You cannot be. No, no, the people. Well, the, the, the media always say the people want to know. So, <laughs> so, so, Lester, you think you're there? Hold on. They can't touch you. Judy, we touch they you. Can't. Hold on. No one. You cannot. I'm, 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 a, Dutch, I'm a Dutch citizen. I'm American. Lester, that's enough. I'm an American. <laughs> I'm an American citizen, and what's your problem yeah. with that? <laughs> yeah, you can't touch me. I'm an American. I okay. must about three thousand people live in Dutch. <laughs> wow! Wow! <laughs> you you can uh, actually have twenty, 20 million Lester, people. If, if I were you, that type of disrespect, <laughs> I would come off. <laughs> that, that would be my cue to exit. <laughs> no man, I'm a bad man. <laughs> Yeah, but anyway, um, Sandy, thank you, Sandy, Sandra, Sandy, S Sandy, 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 Sandy. 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 Just get, Only Lester can call me Cassandra. Okay, all right. Let's have all these benefits. He's in the will of many people, I presume. Yeah. Um, I, we were we were just talking about um, the September 11, and um, Alex came and he brought some points, and which are valid points, which which people talk about a lot. But I just I wanted to put it in focus when we got just one hour at a house to talk about anything and uh september 11 we we're talking about what, where were you so at? hold on so so brent they're interesting point not necessarily valid points they're what interesting points but not so necessarily but not necessarily valid. valid yeah 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 or, or should i say alex has an opinion and he's entitled or, to or, have or an exactly. opinion. Like, i'm trying to use the word valid i'm trying to try to try to validate myself using valid now let me see he had a valid perception within himself of what he believes. Validation means that you validated something no, 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 no. for something that, else. Valid... proven to be factual. <laughs> yeah. Simmer. 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 Remember, you're, Simmer. you're a lawyer. Yeah, exactly. Simmer, you're a lawyer. I caution you. I caution you, Simmer. Be very careful. Let me, let, me, let me try to put it in a different context for you. All right. Oh, with all like everyone respect. here, we all have our opinions, and Alex was entitled to his. He voiced his opinion and is disdain with America and how things are. And to forget about 9-11, people like me can't forget about 9-11. So I'm entitled to that. Same way he is entitled to having his own opinion. It's not factual. That's his opinion. That's his theory. That's just things that he believes. Doesn't necessarily mean that there's any proven fact to it. So... I respect his opinion and, and, and I respect and, his theories, but it was arrogance it, to it, me, to be and honest it, with you. And it doesn't mean that it is valid. See, I got the words so I can use it, yeah? It doesn't mean that it is valid. 
Yeah. So I use the word no, not necessarily. As, yeah. So, 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 <laughs> so Sandy, as I said, the great senator yeah. in New York said, everyone is entitled to their own opinion, but not their own facts. Yes. Thank you. So, so Sandy, Sandy, where were you? You really want to know? Yes. Really, we well, want to know. We really want to know how many people want to know my business now. Why not no. go down there? Why not go down there? <laughs> So 9-11, I literally had just come out of my shower and I was standing in my bedroom in my birthday suit with my jaw to the floor. And then when I looked out, out the window, I was living in this high rise building in New York City and there was just this cloud of smoke everywhere. You know, it was it was um, freezing, to be honest with you. You know, I don't think I could find words to describe how I felt that morning. Um, but I was home in my apartment in New York, and the aftermath of it was what really, really, um, uh, you know, affected me, both on a personal and a professional level. But I was home, in a nutshell, in my apartment mm. in New York City, very close to the Twin Towers. Right, yes, yes. And, and, and what, what, what's your take on it now, I mean, 20 years on? You see, for people like me, my mother-in-law works for and worked for NYPD, and she was there when it happened. I asked, I happened to have two aunts that worked in the area um, as well who were affected. I've had multiple colleagues that lost their lives, um, friends that have lost their lives. Um, so for me, it's personal, you know, because. I live with people that witnessed it, that was there, that are still to this very day suffering from the aftermath of that or the effects of 9-11, whether it be mental, physical, or emotional. There are people who are still traumatized to this day. So for someone to come and dismiss that, it's very disrespectful. Um, whether America caused anything, every country has gone to war at some point in their life. America is not immune from that either, and it's not immune from retaliation from any other country. But at the same time, we are not talking about statistics. We're not talking about numbers. We're talking about people's lives, people that were affected, whether indirectly or directly. I don't think the United States will ever be the same because of 9-11. Um, and that's just my opinion. Uh, uh, what, uh, what do you guys think about um, what happened just recently now, 20 years on? I think the, the <clears throat> Taliban's are back in place. The movements by the government of America in allowing this to happen on the eve. Or is it a slap in the face of all those um, veterans? Slap in the face of all those persons who actually died and their family? I wonder, is, I wonder what is the taste I don't know if any, I didn't watch the news that much today, but I don't know if any of the victims' families <laughs> said anything about how they feel now in light of what happened in, in Afghanistan, <laughs> where, where they're seeing persons <laughs> who were part of the, the world, f are in government. <laughs> Some of the guys in, are in government now in, in Afghanistan. <laughs> I would say disappointed, you know, is, is I spent a ton of years in Afghanistan and, you know, for. Hold on, hold on, hold on. What's that? How long did you spend in Afghanistan? I was in Afghanistan from, from 02 to 03 and 04. And then I went over into Iraq. Um, and one of the thing that we did in Afghanistan and if, if, if folks know Afghanistan, it's a tribal society. We yeah. convinced a lot of the tribal leaders to let the girls go to school. Because what we said is that it's a pathway. And I remember I said to this one person, I said, look, you know, if you go back and look at your great-grandfather, your father, you didn't have a upward mobility. And I didn't say it in these words, but your daughter has a chance, give her that chance. So for me, it's, it's personal um, because I've seen the, the sacrifices of the vets. You know, I, I remember when a, a, a Huey went down and, and 22 special forces died. 
And, you know, what I've said to the veteran world is this. Your sacrifice was in vain. You did what were you supposed to do. What transpire after, that's not your fault. It's the policymakers. It's the politicians. And, mm -hmm. I, and I do believe, and I said this before, the American public was left with a false choice. And what I have always said, I was really surprised when I went to Afghanistan. I thought I was back in my history book because they were a fifth century country. And mm. I do believe that we needed to spend... Well, O'Neill, what, 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 what do you mean What do you mean by that, O'Neill? Because a lot of people may, may want to know what do you mean. They had no infrastructure. By, by they what, had by, nothing. By what I mean is that... So I'll give you an example. I was up in the Kous area. Um, I was in a place called Salerno, which is next door to Pakistan. And if, if, if folks look at Tora Bora, I was up in that area. There was nothing civilization, Lester. Literally, there were huts, not even places where you say ha are real under resources. There was nothing. Right? It is as if you have transcended back where you're reading about, you know, the tribes back in the fifth century. That's what I meant. And then, so no, no, no electricity, no running water, no inside, no, no modern, woman, no modern. Right? Yeah, women and girls, you know, no schooling. So if you're under fifty years old in Afghanistan in two thousand four, you can't read and write. You don't know college. Wow. You don't know. Wow. So this is what I'm saying is that it's 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 a false choice that was provided to say we have these enduring war we you know colin powell say if you if you break it you own it and it's something that we should have owned for a long time and somehow i have always said to our vets and if any vets that is listening you know uh, jacqueline jacqueline affleck is a vet she's listening I asked yeah. her to join, but she said it's emotional for her. Yes, so, it's, it's, know, it's, okay. it's a tough. It's, I, I would say yeah. every vet, okay. I know your sacrifice. I've seen it. I remember when mm. Pat Tillman, and if folks who know Pat Tillman, he was the football player that sacrificed everything, the ultimate sacrifice. I remember the night he was killed. And for all our vets, they have to know that they did their their job they did the things that and they should hold their heads up high now there's a policy discussion that i think history is going to look at and and silver and the question you ask is it's the fact that you know we traced the the taliban which was a repressive you know when you hear the stories that happen firsthand when you see yeah, I remember I had an int interpreter, <laughs> and when I looked at his hand, you know, they chopped his hand off. Right, that's the that's the the the, the group we're dealing with right now, and and for us to sort of try to legitimize this brutal repressive regime, it's it, I could see why every vet who served is saying, "What did we sacrifice for?" And it's not only the U.S. The UK lost a ton of people, yeah. Australia. So it's not just a, a US thing. And I think vets from around the world are grappling with what really happened here. And, and I would say, lift up your head. You did all you needed to do. Because when policymakers send vets to war, they do their job. And now the policymaker has failed to express to the American people why we should be there. Yes. And unfortunately, we did it in such a callous way where we didn't even <clears throat> engage our partners. We didn't even talk to our partners. Yeah. You know, and, and people will talk about the, the Afghan people and the Afghan army can't you know, fight. They've lost 65,000 Afghan mm -hmm. service members have died. Yeah. We haven't had you know, more than 15,000 troops in Afghanistan for the last 10 years. The yeah. Afghan army and air force have been doing the brunt of the fight and they've kept the Taliban at bay. And I think what we have done, we surrendered. 
to the Taliban. And we're, we're reaping the repercussion. For me, I don't know what, what's going to happen next, but, you know, I, I worry about our vets, but I, I say to our vets around the world and in the U.S., you did your job. Mm. It's the policymakers who have failed you. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it, it was... Anil, I think you, with that statement, you've actually made me a little bit um, emotional as well. So I'm going to drop off for a few minutes, and if time will allow, I will rejoin again. But I 100% concur with your last statement. It's not the best. And I applaud you and all those out there who have fought in some capacity or who have served in some capacity. Thank you, guys. Jacqueline, I feel your pain, girl, I, you know. Thank you, um, O'Neill. Thank you. But I'm going to drop off. Silburn, I'm yeah. sorry it was short lived, but. No, that's all right. You're driving. I recognize off. you're driving and you got to yeah. focus as well. Yes, yes. Exactly. And, and, and Jacqueline, start. and the other thing, Jacqueline, if you want to talk. Oh, okay, you know, okay. Uh, um, sorry. I just want to say bye. Okay. Bita. I'm sorry, not Bita. Um, Sanja, uh, I'll, yes. I'll, 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 I'll remove you. You don't have to do it, yeah? So Because you're driving, okay? okay? All right. And, yeah. and, and I would say, Silburn, as you know, Jacqueline, DM me. You know, we have mobilized a group of folks to help our vets. Um, we, we we are a group of folks that, you know, like next week, I'm having... I, sorry, I just realized open... I can't see how to remove her. Are you his piece? Oh, you are his piece? Okay. Yes, that's her. All right, okay. His got piece. It, got it, got it, got it, got it. Okay, sorry, yes. So, so what I was saying, Jacqueline, um, if you want to talk, let me know. I'm happy to be a sounding board. We have mobilized groups to help our veterans uh, to sort of get through this. Next week, there's a session every day that we're having just to give safe space to our vet because I know a lot of our vets. Um, because, you know, if you've never served, and I, I didn't serve, I was just there as advisors to these group. And when I see the bravery of the men and women, and, you know, one thing I was thinking this morning is in Bagram Air Base, you know, it, it was it was such, you know, in the early days, it was even worse. You'd be walking down this road next to the flight line and the entire base stop because a fallen soldier was being brought out of the field and been put on a C-17 to go to Dover. And in the early days, that was, there was a lot there. So, you know, it, it, it was tough, and it, it's a thing that for me is where you know frustration is not the the, the way. It's just a callousness, and no one is explaining to our vet to say, "Look, here's the decision we made on why," and that's the thing that 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 bothers me the most. But I would always say. Our vets, you yes. have but, done amicable. So hold your head up. Um, O'Neill, I have a very good friend, um, Bobby Alfonso Gillins. He's back in um, um, the US now. Evelyn. Hi, Jacqueline. How are you doing? I'm well. I, I, I know. I, I know. I, I, I took a risk in inviting you. <laughs> Yes, I know. Um, I was I just listening, and I really appreciate the remembrance of you know all that we've been through. I did two tours in Afghanistan and two tours in Iraq, and I did after years. And um, I don't know his name, but he was speaking. He said he didn't serve, but he ha he was part of us. You know Disney. On here. On here. Disney. We li yeah, we we lined Disney Road. I remember yes. the twelve bodies we had to send home, and it's very difficult. And so I'm a bit emotional because of the last guy that was on. And so you know, uh, and I don't speak much, but it is hurtful because I lost a lot of people. And mm -hmm. I just want to say thank everyone for remembering. Because we didn't just do it for the U.S., we did it for everyone. The yeah. Afghanistan people are suffering. We were there. We saw it. We know. Mm. Yes. Yeah. So thank you. I um 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 Jacqueline. I have a very good friend, um, near me. 
he's Afghanistani. He lives here in, in Holland with me. Very good friend. And he would tell me stories, you know, because he, he said he lived in one of the remote areas and he said, you will just see bombs are just dropping, you know, and he said that the Taliban was bad. He had to escape into Pakistan and then he went to India to get to the Netherlands. You know, so it was, he told me stories upon stories. Most of his family was killed in front of him by the Taliban. Like, they, they would just take out persons and they, they would execute them in front of their whole families and stuff like that. You know, if they, if they think that you were against what their religion or their practices or stuff like that. So when he's telling me this, it's like, you know, like you, you, can't, really, you can't really fathom it if you have not experienced certain things. Um, I was able to identify somewhat based on living in one of the harshest inner cities in Jamaica. But, 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 but if, if, you, if you're not of the religion that they want, they will execute you. I don't know how to, 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 to respond so, to so that. Let's, let, let, me, let me put it in context. When you see evil... And this is where I want people to understand. When you see evil, you see, you've never seen, even in the inner city of the worst place, this evil that I saw, not only in Afghanistan, but in Iraq, it's different. Yeah. It's a different type of evil. And, you know, the, the fact that, you know, and the fact that Jacqueline said, we didn't just do it for, we did it for the Afghan people. And we convinced a lot of Afghan women to come out of, you know, their sort of introvert and, and be, you know, when, when the first Afghan female pilot, right? We, we convinced a lot of fathers to let their daughters go because we said we're going to be there as a partner to help you. Mm -hmm. And what I have said is this false choice you know, we're in Japan for the last, what, 75 years. We're in South Korea. We're in Germany. We're in all these places. When we went to in all those other places, guess what? Those places weren't 5th century. And, and, and Jackie could correct me. When you go into Afghanistan, it was like you're back in the 5th century. Yeah. It's like, wow, is this a place? I thought poverty, you know, and you see these folks. It's a very tribal society, but it's a beautiful place. It's a, it's a, it's a, yeah. Yeah. Can, I, can I come in there, O'Neill and Jacqueline? Is it that uh, I was speaking to a taxi driver the other day he's from Pakistan and he said women in Pakistan, Afghanistan that's how they know, that's how they've lived thousands of years. So he made it look as if to say it is normal and the West is trying to come in and impose. But is it a thing whereby they have been so sincere, their mind is so programmed that that is the way until they see something else. Hang on a second. This is not the way it should be. It, it, is that what it is? Because yeah. as I said, the taxi guy said, he's from Pakistan. That's how we are. That's how we <laughs> lived our life. That's how we are for thousands of years. So, so, hold on, on you. I don't know if you guys saw it where in Saudi Arabia, maybe two years ago, women are not allowed to drive. They, they weren't allowed to have driver's license. And women used to take, used to do selfie videos of them driving. And, and I think last year or maybe 2019, they passed a law to allow women to finally drive in Saudi Arabia. In my mind, I'm saying, we take women driving, my mother drive, my sisters drive, everybody. It's like a normal thing. And I'm saying for thousands of years or hundreds of years, women were not allowed to do a simple task of driving. And when I spoke to a Saudi um, um, person, he said to me, that's not only it. The woman couldn't even go out without the escort of a man. Was it the same for, for Afghanistan? It was, it was the same. So if the, the point that you just asked the question, if you contextualize it, 1910 is when women in the Americas were allowed to vote, right? They weren't allowed to do a lot of things. Because, you know, but we have sort of progressed as a country where women being in the workplace has made, made us a stronger country. And yeah. if you look at countries where women are subjugated, they're not a growing country. 
the taxi driver, what they have done is subjugate women and have not allowed women to grow. And Silburn, when I went to Afghanistan, there was a group of women. And when you let them grow, the things that they're able to achieve is magical. Yeah. Is that, you know, there was a group of women, I forgot what province in, in, in Afghanistan, there's this group of French that came in, they had this flowers that was, the flowers was really good. It smells really good. And they made soap for years, thousands of years, they made these soaps. And these French, they came and they turned it into a business. Yes. And those soaps were in all these boutiques in France, New York. Those women were making two, three thousand dollars a month because of that. And I think what, what they're afraid of for whatever reason is that they want to keep subjugating these women. And they put these women in burkas. And it's it's if you've never seen it, it's the weirdest thing you ever see is that it's a full face. And when you have a society, I'll give you an example. If you're married in Afghanistan, and I remember in Kabul, a lot of the women who were begging on the street with their kids were former Mujahideen soldiers' wife. Yes. And once you're married and your husband died, you're outcast for life. You're done. For life, yeah, I know. And you, the, your only survival is go back. So the thing that I say to our policymaker is that, is, is that what we want to sort of embrace that sort of thinking and saying that we've done it for thousands of years doesn't mean it right for hundreds of years we didn't allow women to 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 drive we didn't allow women to vote we didn't yes. allow women to get out of the house right but now look at where we are as a country right and we don't have to be the police but i think to the point we could show light we could show what's different. Because I remember when I said to the tribal leader, I said, look, your grandfather has no resources. Your father had no resources. But can't you allow your daughter to at least have a chance? And I tell you, when, when that little kid played on the computer yeah. and he saw in her eyes, it changed his entire, and he allowed the women to go play around on computers. And now imagine 20 years in, the things that we, Jacqueline, convinced these women and girls that says, look, you could be all you could be, yes. but now we're saying you go back into the burkas. You can't play sports. A country that banned music, really? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's like that's that's who we're gonna embrace, and that's who we're gonna say, "Oh, they're good people." Really? Yeah, no. Yes, yes. I, I remember one one guy looked at me and said, "He said if you didn't have your security behind you, I would literally chop your head off." Right? It's like okay, and that's the type of people you deal with. Well, well hold on. Why? 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 Because they don't. Look, so our our way of life. Is antithesis to their life. They just hate us for whatever reason. And these are not the Afghan people. Once you embrace beautiful people, right? My my interpreter, you know, I, I have my interpreter. You know, thank God he's here. My brother interpreter got got out. A couple of people got out. My brother interpreter got out two weeks ago. Got into Turkey, right? right? So, but they were great people. They were grateful people. When you see them. But there's this group of people, and you know, what people don't realize, Afghanistan is multiple ethnicity. There's the, the, yeah. the, the Pashtun, which is majority, that's Pakistans. You have the Tajiks, and then you have you know, sort of um, the Hazaris and all these different other groups there in, yeah. in Afghanistan. The Pashtuns are aligned to, um, to, um, to Pakistan, but they're very tribal. But they're, they're people who will go to ends of the world for you once you treat them well. And I remember there's this one person that I was interacting with. And I remember the daughter was about 13 years old and they had outcast the daughter. And I said to him, what's, what's wrong? He's like, well, they don't know something is wrong with her. 
And it turned out, you know why they are caught? She had a, she has a set of teeth. She has two set of teeth. Mm. And she couldn't eat anything because when she eat, the pain was so crazy. And I said to him, I said, would you allow me to help her? Because I said, there's nothing wrong with her. She just had a generic defect that could be fixed easily. It took weeks for them to decide. And finally, he said, I remember when he said, he's like, take her in the trunk of the car to Kabul and get her fixed. It's like, why the trunk of the car? He's like, because... Same thing what you said, you have to. It's like, no, we, and that girl today, I don't, I, hopefully she's, we took it, her life changed. Mm. And it, all it is, Silver, is that I yeah. looked at, I'm like, why is, is this woman in the corner just sitting there? And she, all he said was, she's an outcast. I'm like, what the hell? She's an outcast. She had a set of teeth. Yes. And that's, that's the set of people we deal with, Silver. It, it's, it's tough. And that's why I think but, you have vets who are, just and did they have to? But, and, did, and did she have to go in the in the trunk of the car? That's it, no, you have to. Mm -hmm. You yeah. have to. But Jackie, Jackie, I like to ask you something, Jackie. What was one of your or like the, your top two or top three of your your best memories of Afghanistan? Mm, best memories. <laughs> I don't have best memories. Because most of it, I'd rather forget. I worked in the aviation unit, and mm -hmm. you know, we lost a lot of aircraft. We lost a lot of people. So, my, yeah. my good memories, I probably suppressed. Yeah. Well, I did remember the food was good. <laughs> they did have really because the Afghanistan would cook for us, and they, oh, okay. But you know, other than that. Um, I did meet some very friendly Afghanistan people. They yeah. stated, Mr. O'Neill stated, they are very friendly people. Um, but like I said, for me, um, being in aviation, um, we lost a lot. Yeah. So it's not the best of memories, especially when you have people that are very close to you. Yeah. 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 Um my 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 friend as I said um he went to Camperdown High School, I went to Excelsior and his uh first uh his children's mother, his first set of children, um Peter Gay, my good friend. So he, he migrated to the US, he went to the army. He he served in um he's still in the army, he served in Iraq, he served also in Afghanistan and he would call me from Afghanistan and he said I just wanted somebody who is not a soldier to talk to. And I said, what? I, 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 you know, and I couldn't, I couldn't wrap my mind around it. He said that one of his friends came out of the tent or the room or whatever, naked, running and screaming and shot himself. Yep. You know, mm. and he, he said that he has seen that image over and over, that guys who just can't, take the, the, the war, the the, the, the the environment, you know? And I think um, Alex has his opinion, and many persons have their opinions, but they don't know the other side. They don't know what what, what the vet, what the vets face, what the, what the, the service men and women face. As you said, Jacqueline, you had persons who you, <laughs> who you spoke to, right? And imagine you're in aviation or somebody who is speaking to the pilot, and in mid-conversation, you know, a uh, 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 land-to-air rocket hit that 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 craft in mid-conversation, and you, you hear nothing. That has a lasting effect on on a person. You know, so we we have to be mindful of the, the, our our opinions and utterances surrounding these things. Yes, you know, sir. as I said, when 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 Bobby came back to the United States, he had to go into therapy. Yeah. He had to. He had to go into deep therapy. So, 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 Lester, I'll tell you the reason that I would be always forever grateful our vet. And I know, Jackie, if you remember this, there was a huge firefight, and a lot of people were pinned down, and a spec ops, twenty-two members were racing into that firefight, and they went down. So, imagine that. There's a firefight going mm. and you're racing to go save. And I remember that day 
they grounded everything. And it, in Bagram, people were crazy because everybody wanted to go out. Mm-hmm. everybody want to find a way even though we just lost 22 members and and what the, the pilot an hour before just like you and i are talking he and i were sitting and he was like dude i gotta go he's like shit is happening i'm like where are you going he's like i can't tell you i gotta go and he just took off and and that's where i always be forever grateful but the the, the one memory i have in Afghanistan that is forever. And it, I was so sick to that, like a dog jockey is because I went out at the wire. So my, a couple of us in the spec force, this one guy said he could make goat. He could do a, it's a, he could do roast goat. So there's a, there's a Jamaican guy. He's like roast goat. And we left Bagram. We somehow got out and went out, came back. We were so sick. Because you can't eat their goat. Their goat is different. Your stomach right. was. But it was the best time Lester was in there. And the guy was like, look, nothing is going to happen to you. We're just going to go out and roast goat. And it was like, it just tells you the, the type of people. But it, 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 it's tough. And, and I will always say our veterans group, there's a lot of help out there, you know, there's a former secretary of, of the Navy who I'm close to. We have a whole bunch of things going on next week. Reach out. Don't don't stay. You know, DM me if you want to talk um, because we're forever grateful for your sacrifices. I, I tell you, I tell you, um, just uh, Jackie, Jackie, you want to respond? You want to say something? You want to say something for it? Thank you very much. It was- I work for the VA now, so you know I'm very close to everything that's here, and, and friends reach out. But there's, there's always more that you know we want to know what's out there. So yeah. I will even pass your information on because there's a lot of people out there who need the help. You know they don't like to go to the medical facility. Like myself, I don't use the medical facility. I'm very fortunate to have people in my life that supports me 100%. What keeps me going. But uh, yes, I will take up your information and pass it on to others. Yeah. Jackie, qu- question. Is your background Jamaican or Caribbean? Yes, I'm from Jamaica. A lie. Are we there to that English she, to you? No, she's from um, Ochi. No, no, she's from, no, she not from no Ochi. <laughs> we are, you want to claim everybody for Ochi now? I'm not from Ochi, but you know what? I'm going home for my 50th birthday in November. She's from <laughs> Sanganeti. Wait, wait she's she not Sang- she she finished. She's going to say something. And? Going to Ochi and Montego Bay. Okay. No, you shouldn't go Ochi. No, not going to go Ochi. <laughs> See? There's a war in Ochi. Stay far from Ochi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Portland. So from- where? Portland. What? What land? What land? What land? Me and Jackie are talking about. We are Parishina. Jackie, which part of Portland you come from? Lester, Lester, uh, Lester. Remember, you know, not everybody want to tell them. them <laughs> the what are the man that? Them, them, them Paris Lester, Lester, yeah. What are the man that? Them Paris Lester, yeah. Talk to me, Jackie. Me think think so you come from Kingston, now I'm come from Portland. Hey, 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 chill. <laughs> yes, that's it. No, so, um, I wasn't born in Portland. My family is, the Affleck is from Portland. But, mm-hmm. Grange Hill, that's where my grandmother, I lived with my grandmother there. My father yeah. is, um, he gets around. So there's a lot of afflicts that he drops off in a few places. Your father was, was a bedroom bully. Bedroom bully. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> he was a police officer in, um, Clar- in Clarendon. But by the way, hold on. So Green Jill is in Clarendon. Actually, my grandfather, father is from Green Jill. I heard there was a grain deal in Clarendon. Yep. I've, I've never, um, been, but um, I was close to Moco. That's, yep. Um, yeah, that's where I was born in that area. Then I went to Portland and lived with my grandmother in Grange Hill in Portland. And then I moved to Kinston and lived with my godmother. So, <laughs> but, I but, to- but, as, uh, as you said, Moco. You never people. You never tell people you come from Moko, you know. <laughs> no, no. But she she said it in a nice way. I know. From, she said it in a very nice way. Moko, no, but you know? no. Back in the day, you never tell people you come right. from Moko. Because when people say 
Hey, you must come from Moko. <laughs> oh, there's a, and, oh, there's a and, but, but, too sometimes. But only, only and Jackie. I, I don't know if Jackie has been back to Moko since. Moko has some superb, wonderful infrastructure. The houses there are really nice. You have some nice houses in Moko. Th that's where they, what's his name, died, um, the, the singer. Um, Praesha Job. Pre what's his name? That's where he's from. Um, um, is it Toots? you? Oh, yeah. Eric Donaldson? No. no. Eric Donaldson is not dead. Oh, <laughs> um, that? What uh, are you doing, Silver? No, 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 I don't know. Oh, oh pressure uh, job. Oh, pressure job. You know, uh, I, forgive horse. me, because I don't Sorry, follow. No. This no. is the, the guy who just passed recently. Okay, I forget his name. Yeah. Toots. Toots, yeah. Toots is from Mocha. I just said Toots. I just said Toots. Yeah, he's from Mocha. <laughs> yes. Really? Yep. Okay. I know Toots well. I know his son also. Yep, he's from Herbert. Mocha. Mm. Yeah. Oh, that's the guy they had the big funeral for. Yep, yep. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I'm yes. Dad yes. telling me. Yeah, Toots, Toots, Toots is a very, very, very good good friend of mine. Yep. Yeah, he's from Mocha. Yeah. All right. Well, well guys, um, thank you so much for joining. Um, Jacqueline, thank you um, for um, taking up the invite, even though I was wondering if I should have sent you the link, but you, you took the bait, and um, it was really good. Because what it did, it sort of shed a sort of light as to persons who directly involved. It, it, it is one thing to speak about something or to remember something, but to hear it from persons who are actually involved in aspects of it. That today, when I made a, a condolences to the September 11th, I did not just restrict it to America only. I, I sort of extended it to persons who were affected by the aftermath, that is, the war. Persons who were like deemed as collateral damage. You know, when <clears throat> Afghanistan, uh, in Iraq, children were, um, you know, were used as shield or whatever like that, and they died. So I had to extend that condolences to them as well, I mean, to the families of those persons. Rest in peace. And we can't afford to forget these things and just belittle them because just like oh, what's happened in the, the Holocaust, you know, the Jews never say forget. They always say remember and learn. In slavery, the, um, the, the transatlantic movement, remember and learn. And this is also remember and learn. Um, I, apartheid, apartheid also and, and, and Jim Crow. Yes. And, <coughs> and whatever, whatever views by other persons, as we discussed earlier, our views and opinions. But at the same time, we have to hold fast to what we believe. And everybody has their belief, you know what I mean? <laughs> so that's, that's, yeah. that's the dynamism of the world. That's the dynamic factors. And that's something which I really, I push for. That's why I don't like anything which is mandatory. That's why I don't like anything which separate and divide. If we can all find, I, I use this word at times <laughs> called the black element. And the black element is not <clears throat> restricted to race. It is finding a common ground, a common denominator yeah. where everybody can rally around. There's a song in Jamaica. Um, you guys might know it. Rally around the red, rally around rally the red, the blue. red, road, black and green. You know? Third world. Yeah. Either third world, yes. You know? That's I, I, know. I, I, I don't think know. I, I, know, I, know, I know only to rally around the green. Okay, right. Okay. Fantastic. <laughs> But, but, but my, Sim batch, Burn. my batch is so, going. Go on. Go. Mags S J. So, so, so Toots Hibbert is one of the arguable, the the most recognized um, reggae singer out of Jamaica. I look him up. He's he's toured with you know the likes of the world. Um, so mm -hmm. he died on September 11th also. Onil, is that your who's 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 having some disturbance there? Onil, what is happening? Is it, is it insurgents? Is it Onil? Onil, the Taliban social, come. Is that your children? You know, the Taliban come. come. <laughs> the Taliban come. <laughs> well, well, listen, insurgents. Well, listen, listen, guys. It was a good show tonight, and um, and and. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> no, Silver, you have to make a clip of this, Silver. You have to make a clip of the, the Taliban come. <laughs> <laughs> did, did you say daddy or something like that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs>
I, I, I tell you guys, last week Onil, Onil was in a space where I was just free. Today is like restricted. And yeah, Onil, <laughs> Onil was beaming last week, it's shiny and you know. <laughs> As in my place, my special place. But well, listen, listen, guys. Um, I think two condolences, but I'm questioning one. Howard Hamilton, the former public defender, is it public defender? Or yeah, QC. QC, yes. Yeah. Passed away in yeah. Jamaica. And yeah. I heard a Karen, Karen Smith. Smith. But, but. Yeah, that's 3 a.m. No, 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 no. But I saw something on Twitter by Jean Laurie that says she didn't pass away. Lester, I don't think I said. No, no, no. I, I, no, I, I spoke to the Observer, um, Kevin Jackson, the Observer entertainment writer. Um, he confirmed it. Right. Okay. Because, because the Gleaner have it, but I, I don't know. But um, so you said someone on no, Twitter. The observer, sessions. the Observer broke it at. He told me at three a.m. Um, which, which was about nine a.m. my time, and he. He he broke it on the Observer website at four forty a.m. Jamaica time. So she 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 has passed. Well, look at look at what I'm. This is Jean Laurie Chin on Twitter. I was misinformed. Karen Smith, daughter Sarah, mom has has not passed. Thank goodness. What time was that? On, let us three twenty seven. And it said Jean Laurie Chin says, and somebody responds, "Oh, thank God, the Gleaner is reporting that she has passed, and the Prime Minister as well." Um, I. You know, I, I'm very careful. Let me check it and get back to you. Let's sir. I'll check it and yeah, get back to you. Yeah, let's, let's leave it like that there. Um, <laughs> um, but Howard Hamilton, you know, mm. passed pass away. And I think there's somebody else. So one of the condolences to, to, to them as well, to the family. Uh, yep, but, 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 mm. but Toots Hibbert, I think Peter Tosh, and somebody else passed on 9-11. Oh, I was talking today, Lester. Sorry. No, 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 no. I'm saying. I don't understand what you mean. Years ago, you mean? September, yeah. To, I think Toots Ebert also passed um, last year. On 9 okay. And um, uh, Peter Tosh also. If you can check that on Twitter, um, tw check that on the Google uh, on you. Yeah. <clears throat> Where I think Peter Tosh also died on 9 11. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. A lot of Jamaican, then, pa lot of Jamaican passed away this week. Uh, Nadine Kersha says, I, I think the, the COVID. Um, has been having a, a, a devastating impact on Jamaica, um, Leicester, isn't it? Um, the so, lockdown again. Sorry, Anil, you were saying? Mm. No, no, I was going to end on a, a good note for you, your, your country. There's, there's a big news for your country. Is that Ronaldo, Ronaldo score goals? No, no, no. Nobody care Ronaldo? about the washed up Ronaldo. <laughs> <laughs> Who's Ronaldo? Yeah. No, so the US Open. The 18 year old British, she won. Okay. Oh, yes. The young yep. lady there. Yes. It's the yes. first time since Serena that a, uh, a qualifier has made it all the way to the final. Yes. And not only that, her dad coached her. Yes. And her dad is not a tennis player. Yes. Um, but, but O'Neill, finally, finally, they're bringing it home. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, they're bringing it home. <laughs> right? Because the football, the football never work out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> never pull a big side. So, right. so, 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 Cristiano is back home now. Back in, in, in um, Manchester he, United. He yes, scored yes. two goals today. Uh, and, and I was watching the match when Silver, and I was like, oh, yeah, I'm scored two goals. I said, with Silver, man, watch the match. <laughs> we take yes, um, <laughs> did, did, did you see the, the awesome performance by Lionel Messi against Bolivia? Don't know who Lionel Messi is. Bolivia, Bolivia is a <laughs> Bolivia is a third-rated team, so nobody cares. It, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Three goals, awesome. Okay, guys. Well, listen. On this note, thank you so much, Jacqueline. Jacqueline, thank Jacqueline. you again. Thank I, you I for your service. Thank you. Thank you for your service, Jacqueline. Appreciate Thank you for your service, it. Jacqueline, yeah. as well. And um, as I said, O'Neill is there for you guys. Reach out to him and stuff like that. You know? Reach out anytime. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. okay. All right. just, yeah. One second, guys. Yes. Let me just say bye to Jacqueline. Okay, Jacqueline, take care of yourselves. See you. Okay, right. thank you. Have a good night. Bye-bye. Right, <clears throat> okay, let, I, I, just, I, just, I just wanted to check something. If... Um, if Vita wanted to say bye before we go, 
as, as well. I'm a Vita, only, I know only, only the, on the manners. These kids are coming. Look at the insurgents. The insurgents are coming for O'Neill. I know. Insurgent, you talk the about the Taliban and home come is coming on. for him. <coughs> Taliban saw so kick down the door. Vita, what, Vita? What, you have gone to bed? <laughs> she got a bed in her pearls. Vita, Vita, you look so ever, ever, ever percent. See, him want get, if Vita, him want get in the will. But he might, he might do everything we get another way. Everybody get married like Alex. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Oh, hold on. Hey, you hey. see, Alex, Alex they never put nothing on Facebook. I <laughs> say, Alex put it on Instagram. No, no, Instagram is deep, man. I'm not going to say anything. I'm sorry. Don't, 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 don't go there, you know? <laughs> um, <laughs> so, you know what I'm going to guys is that a lot of us don't know what's happening sometime in the back end with Afghanistan I just want to mention that a lot of people were brought here from there Afghanistan people and we are re them and as refugees and they're being uh, put all over the country so that's another situation that the, the government is doing for the people and um, whether they write the policy or not but they're trying to fix some of what they're doing stuff. So yeah yes. there's a lot of children that I know, and the, the last point I'll make, I say, you know, I will always be forever grateful to our women and men who serve, our police officers, and our first responders, our, our firefighters in New York. I know, you know, a lot of times you guys get beaten up, but when problem comes, you're running the other way, and I could seat nine eleven they were rushing in the building to save people and a lot of them perish. So we always, and I, and I tell people, that's why I will never disrespect a police officer or a firefighter because when your house is on fire, they run into your house, no question asked. And we always have to think about that and go back to 9-11 and look at all those people who rushed that building. They didn't even blink an eye. Because a lot That's of them, the building came down in it when they rushed towards it, the, the fire guys. Then, but the, the lots of whistles were blowing. What is it? The whistles are alarms, or yeah, yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. O'Neill, as 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 you as you mentioned, the firefighters. I have a cousin, Trevor Edwards. He trains the firefighters in Jamaica. He went and did a course um, in in um, Fort Lauderdale, I think, or Florida, somewhere in Florida, <laughs> um, with the firefighters. And this was in the early two thousands. When he came back, he said that the, uh, how we fight fire in Jamaica, it's from a distance. He said these guys literally go, go in and fight the fire. Yes. He said he has never seen anything like that before. Yeah. So, you know? so one of he, my he, he um, gave. No, you're you're right. They do it. So one of my classmates actually blew out his ears, so he's deaf. One of my college mate, he ran into the building. And luckily, he survived, but he can't, he, he, well, now with the technology, but he blew out. After that, he couldn't, he had to retire from the firefighter because huh. Huh? he lost his hearing, total hearing. But now with technology, he's able to hear a little bit. So there's, there's a lot of people who have sacrificed affected. and affected and impacted. The after effect, as far as which there's a lot of cancer patients right now that affiliated with 9-11 um, that was not in the building. I was just to clean up after wow. the firefighters. They, they, they volunteered. Really? They volunteered. Yep. There's yep. a lot of cancer patients right now. Um, even cancer patients and um, family members who went and did some of the cleanup with the debris, their uh, children or their, their their other parts, counterparts, our family are suffering from cancer just from the debris that being associated. So it's yeah. way bigger than what exactly. So so, after, exactly. so so the aftermath extends. I, I just saw um, yeah. Wayne yeah. Wayne Ferron said over one thousand persons still have no closure. When he said that, I remember a young man they interviewed. His father died, and as far as he's concerned, every day misses his dad. You know. Every day, Mrs. So, and so silver into that yeah. point. Sorry, mm -hmm. Cantor Fitzgerald was a financial Cantor. company. I was trying to remember that. Cantor. Confirm, yes. And they were on the top floor. So when fee people said they it's had It's 117 no stories, right? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. But when people said no closure, the building burned. 
so their body is, is the only thing of their loved one is DNAs. So that is why, you know, we have to empathize with, 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 with what's going on and realize there's a lot of people, a thousand people have no closure because there was nothing to see. Right. Yeah. And Nadine said yeah. that mm. there was a lot yeah. of that's but how Peter said Peter is talking. Peter is talking. No, I said, Nadine just mentioned that even the people from Canada who volunteer and other countries that came and volunteer, they are. Okay. Canada, Israel, yes. Germany, Italy, you yes. name it. There's country that, and, and this is where I, I you know, will forever be indebted because there's a lot of people who went there and dug with their hands mm -hmm. to try. Yeah. You know, um, it, it was, it was, it was amazing to see. And I remember when I walked down there and I saw that gaping hole and the fire coming out. And, you know, when you see that, they say, I hear something and people just stop. It, it was, it was, it was yeah. something else. Yeah. Let's say you're saying something. After a couple of days. Uh, and after that, I went there a couple of days just to see. And I mean, you could not go there without crying. It doesn't matter how strong you are to see the building that I live in New York for 20 years and so used to these two buildings. And then when you go there, it's just an a, a, a empty spot. It's, even today, um, now, if I go there now and look at it, it still brings back that memory. Yeah. That. Mr. Uh, Sedovita, so Badman, are crying in public. <laughs> but, but, um, but, but a lot of people, two things, a lot of people don't know it's at the World Trade Center is actually like a complex. It was four or five buildings, right? Two. It was two buildings. Two, two. No, two, no, there, 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 two there's smaller buildings. towers. They found it. They're at a building, but. Yeah, were, smaller building. Yeah, it's two yeah. tall. And yeah, then but, there's. But yeah. yeah. Yes. I'm not, no, what I'm saying, a lot of people only thought it was just two, two yes, uh, yes. Uh, but there's, there's smaller buildings yes. on, the, on the complex right, yeah. itself. And even underneath it, you had the train systems yes, and, yes. and yes. all of that. So it, it affected persons who even weren't in the building per se, you know? And, and, um, sorry, go ahead, Lester. Yeah, I, I, and, and I've spoken <clears throat> to persons who have gone there and they said that the, the smell of burning flesh, you know, human flesh, stayed with them for the rest of their life. It, you, 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 you could remember the smell, yeah. you know? Yep. Yeah. Yep. You know, it's yeah, all... Nadine just said something about we're lucky in Canada because our RCMP found Canadian Air Canada flights with box cutters under mm -hmm. the seat at Toronto Airport. Wayne Ferrand and many jumped to their death. Now, yep. that's, that's where I was going to come to before I saw that. Um, Wayne, thanks for that. The choice to be burnt alive. Rudy, Rudy Giuliano this morning, I was watching him and he said, he was retracing his steps and he said, what confronted him was, and he said like it was about the size of his hand when he saw a figure. And he, he saw yes. the person, like the person was about to jump and he said, was he going to, then he literally saw the person just jumping down. Because yes, he saw uh, behind, a lot of... yeah, behind the guy, he saw fire, you know? And yeah, the person it's, jumped. It's, it's... Yeah. So, the plane hit, if I recall, like the maybe a uh, hundred floor is what it hit. Mm -hmm. So imagine yeah, yeah. all the floors above that, and then the second one and all the fuel, the thousands of pounds. It that's what melt. So imagine all of that, and that's the thing that, to this day, I remember. It's just. It's something, the only thing that different is I remember when an EFP hit a, a Humvee in, in Iraq and you, a EFP is a, it, it's a, it's like a molten, it's an IED, but you, you, that was the thing that you fear the most is getting hit by yeah. an EFP yeah. because it doesn't matter your armor, it will literally melt everything. It, yeah. when you, when you turn up, all you see is sort of molten stuff. Um, it, it was tough, and I think that's why we have to forever remember. And I think silver and the, the the thing that we have to we have to grapple with as a society. Not even what are the lessons from nine eleven that we could take forward? Because right now, not only we're a divided country, mm. we're a divided world. 
divided world is. And, you know, history has taught us a lot of lessons. If we go back to World War II, World War I and so forth, and we go back to some of the evils of the world, right? We always say, you know, never again, right? And now we have to figure out how do we use this day, 9-11, as we reflect upon mm. this trauma, not mm. only that has inflicted upon the American people, but worldwide. Yes. Because since then, there's been trauma. Look at what took place in France, in Belgium, in all these countries over the last couple of years in, in, in UK. And in the UK, 7-7. Like, 7-7. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So how do we take these lessons and how do we realize that at the end of the day, we have to bring humanity back. We have to be our brother's keeper. We have to hold our elected politicians accountable. And we have to figure out how do we take care of the most marginalized people in this world, right? Because at the end of the day, you know, people will say I'm oppressed. I am not. We are all 1%. Mm -hmm. Right of this world, go some places outside of the U.S. and you see what poverty really looked like. True, yes, true. And yeah. for us to prevent the type of trauma, not only on our continent, because we we have a little buffer because we're sort of the United States of America, and we're isolated from everyone. The same thing with the U.K. You're an island by yourself. We have to figure out yes. how to collectively do all the things that is going to uplift humanity. If not, we're going to see these traumas. And, and I wish again, we, again, yeah, you know, I wish we'll reflect on it. You know, one of the things I was thinking about, and I, I'll put the question out there, but nobody, I believe, will be able to actually answer that question except someone maybe is in the war. And the persons who decide or decided to jump from the Twin Tower. What do you think goes through their mind? Because there's no way they can be, they can survive at the ground from that level. But they decided <clears throat> to jump. And there's one image, and it was played around for a while. I don't know if you guys remember it. The person was diving head down, but there was a comfort position that the person was in. I don't know if you remember seeing that. Um, they, they, and they were trying to find out who is this person, you know, because a lot of things happened during the course of that time. But can anybody fathom or try to empathize or try to understand what would make someone <clears throat> jump from that <clears throat> height with a fire? So, yeah. Well, well, Silburn, when I was going to Curacao a few weeks ago, yeah. we had um, a lot of bad, bad with a lot of turbulence. Yes. Right. And when I say a lot, I mean we were going through maybe two two hours of turbulence, and the the plane tried to go, you know, above, but we still had turbulence. Yes. And the plane, it's it's a, it's a big plane, the seven, uh, the um, seven eighty seven, and it's sh shaking, you know. And in my mind, I'm saying, and now I go down with this, you know, I jump, I jump, you know. <laughs> In my mind, I'm saying my survive, my, my chance of survival is greater if I jump. That, that was the first thought that came to my mind, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think that is what persons are saying to themselves that maybe, maybe, you know. But the, the World Trade Center is three miles long. People don't understand. This building is three miles long. Was three miles up long? There's not, wow. Three miles long. It was There's the tallest one building in the world. Wow. Yeah, there's not one elevator that takes it. You you have to take like, maybe four or five elevators, right, Vita? Like four elevators to go you? to the top. Mm -hmm. you, you there's not one there's not one elevator that took it to the top. Like you have, you know? you have to go up and then you have to cross and go in another elevator that goes. Yeah, like to go. And it would it would it would it would, it would take you to like maybe fifty to twenty oh. minutes to get across and go up. Yeah, yeah. So, you know? so I I I'll always say it's it's huh. It's um. I don't know what those people were thinking, Silburn, but but I could imagine. But I could tell you, there are 
instances where you're on a fire base in either Afghanistan or Iraq and you think you're going to get overrun and you have to make the choice do you get captured by the Taliban yes or do you decide you're going to because if you look at when they capture you some of them they'll cut your head off or burn you alive so you make the decision what are you going to do I think and the there are sometimes someone, that the lack of someone's better to go quick than die painfully. Yep, and and that's yeah. what you decide. Yeah, if you look at the um, the video, and I've never watched any of these videos. The only video I've ever watched was Richard Berger. If you remember, he who he was, he was the Wall Street Journal journal journalist, yeah, that yeah. got his head cut off, and Ch I remember that off, yeah. that traumatized when I see, and that's the. That's the evil. The group right now that is in control, they took this journalist and on literally how we're on video, they cut his head off. Mm. And, it, it's in, and you make those decisions when you see that to say, holy cow, I can't let these people capture me. If I think they're going to capture me, I have to make ultimate sacrifice hmm. yeah but 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 imagine the family members of of richard imagine you know the friends the co the, the colleagues you, you know his mother the, the people seeing this and and, and and you know it's 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 it, it's just um so, so the point i make lester that's the type of people you we're dealing with that burned people in a cage. You remember the Jordanian pilots that yeah. they put in a cage yeah. and watched them burn. It's like, is that the type of people we're going to deal with? And this is the type of people we think we could civilize by turning over Afghanistan to them. And it's like, well, well since we have, we have been there to and as a military family, we, the, the, the family of, of the soldiers, we are also tired and want our men, our soldiers, want our soldiers home. I'm lucky that my, I was just lucky that my, my son-in-law, they pulled um, out and, you know, is alive. But, but yeah. Vita, Vita, oh, sir, so, so here's the thing that I would say about that. If you go back in 24 months, there was never a, U.S. service men killed in Afghanistan. And the reason being because they weren't doing the fighting. They just were on Bagram Air Base. So we're gotten to the point where we needed to be there. So from an international policy, even our allies, the U.K., NATO, Afghan Air Base, we keep that air base. You know, all we have to do is provide mm -hmm. um, the overwatch and stuff for the Afghan Right. We, we, didn't, we didn't have any casualty. I think the, the thing that we didn't do on Evita, I don't know if you heard me, the problem is that we had a false choice. We are saying, well, I'm not going to lose any life, but we haven't lost any life because we have pulled back into base. And yeah. there was more training accidents. So I'll give you an example. Two weeks ago, tragically, five Navy service member died I saw that. Based on, based on the accident, right? So you're always going to have those stuff, right? <clears throat> but in Afghanistan, we have for almost 24 months, no service member. And, and the thing that bothers me the most, to be honest, is that we have 13 Marines, Navy, and Army killed. And nobody is paying attention. It's not as if they're, they're just there, right? And... I think history will judge us in a way, and I don't know what that would look like, but I think history will say our policy policymakers who failed us. Silburn, okay. um, um, other other dimensions are showing up. <laughs> yes, yes. I, I think it's because it, the I, recognize, I, think it's the because I, I think it's because I recognize that O'Neill and Vita they are just getting ready for their evening now. O'Neill is having yeah. insurgents with his children coming at him soon. Lester is about what. One after one, thirty. No, no, no. Well, Lester, Lester I gotta leave off of this and go join another thing and and do him thing and yeah. 
And let's, thing and thing. No, 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 sir. I'm going to my bed. Sir. Let's sit down, sleep. Let's sit down, sleep. And um, yes, I, I, I'm out. I'm out of sleep. I am going to go. I am actually been up for, I'm looking at it right now based on, I've been up for actually 23 hours. Oh, yeah, because you're on jet lag, isn't it? You're coming from <laughs> yep. country. Okay. Well, guys, yeah. listen. I want to say um, thank you guys for another um, exciting... Hold on, Silver and the police. Uh, yeah, reflect. A police out of your house. But, 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 you know, it, it is Ochi. We think they are Scotland Yard, you know. Straight, straight to Ochi, straight from Ochi. Ochi our, 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 our MI5, our MI5, MI, MI6. You know, you know me think I'm bubble and I come joke him down. You know, you know, sometimes I've got these strange people approaching me on Instagram and and they say hi. And then after a while I said, who are you? And then I said, well, I work with MI5 and CIA at the same time, cross... <laughs> <laughs> it just <it'll> disappear. <laughs> well, Lester, that looks like you're you guys having a good one. Well, Peter, you gotta have a good evening, yeah. All right, thank you. All right, okay. Peace right. out, Anil. Peace out, Vita. Later. Later. Peace right. out. All right. Boom, Lester. I see you as you go and you continue your different lives, and Anil. Boom. <laughs> see, boom. That's a fair. Guys of life. <laughs> <laughs> Show up for life. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Cheers, man. <laughs> okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we just um, wrap up another um, night, and I want to thank you so much for joining. Um, let me just say, yeah, bye, Max. I'm still here. <laughs> Carol, just like we're recycling the days of the Bible, the wars and plague, Nadine. You waved, yep. Wall Street journalists' life was grossly done. So, guys, listen, I want to thank you so much for coming on. I want to give enough respect to Jacqueline for coming on, for O'Neill, Alex, um, Vita, Gaza for Life, Bad Man No Cry, <laughs> O'Neill, and um, interesting topics, of course, simply talking about the September 11 reflection, what we learned from it, even though. Many of us are, aren't from the States, but actually we recognize what is happening there. Of course, we got my virgin, lovely music from South Africa. This is State of Cash. The music being played right now is, let me tell you which one. This is a different one. This is Land. Land. Straight from South Africa. State of Cash. Check out his music. Serious guy. I'll play another one. Listen to this one. This one is nice. I like this one. I'll just play a couple of South African music for you. I like this one. I tell you what this is called. Dindemi Loma. Beautiful music, beautiful. I won't get copyright because I got the rights. Right. I just introducing you guys to this one. Take the cash. I'm going to send this to him. He loves when I do this. <laughs> As I said, Tato Cash, follow him, South Africa. Great producer, great guy.
Okay, have a good night. Peace out. God bless you. for this music um, total exclusive straight from the producer's mouth have a good night peace out bless you